I did uh, several hours worth of stuff off stream, yes. Several, several hours. Don't worry, it was all really boring stuff and I plan to share. There's supposed to be a boss here now. Unless it's the one I already got? Hang on, let me pull up my list. Let me actually pull my list over here, that's easier for to see it. But good morning, Dakota, Plutonia, Blade Tavall, Von Falkenstein, and of course Evo is up. Okay, hang on. Hello, DJT. 1122. What's going on? Alright, so. No, that. Yep, the ram armor is back. Maybe it's over here? That doesn't surprise me, Takoto. The second thing, not the former. Well, she's still eating his head. It's still extraordinarily gross. Good morning, E-Tree. Uh, I may have to Google this one. There is one boss fight I'm missing in the plateau. I think. Okay, let's get away from the crows really quick. Let's Google this. We're looking for... Kenneth's Knight. I assumed it was the dude right next to Tanith, which is why I warped here and walked up here, but he's gone. Hello, Flagand. So, okay, let's go kill her. I'm totally down with killing her. She, she's, um, she probably needs to die. Let's just be 100% honest about this. My lord, my god. Alright, she's dead. Invaded by Tanith's Knight. Hey! now killed all the bosses in this zone. Thank you, Pretzel. And no, I'm not cheating. I did, however, finally, finally, finally sit down and just uh, grind face on the birds for a while. I was doing it while I was doing my meetings, my Sunday meetings. And it's a really uh, easy way to do that. It, it's funny how much easier this game is to tolerate when you're doing something else while you're doing it, which is the first thing I wanted to mention. That, uh, I was doing a lot of stuff while watching something else, or while talking to someone else, or like I said, while in a meeting. And all this in the game became a lot more tolerable. So you may or may not notice uh, that we've got a few more dots here. It's because we have now done all the dungeons in this zone, too. Which now means we've all done all the dungeons and all the bosses in every zone, except for the one we just started, the Frost Zone. Now, you're probably thinking, why bother, Lore? Well, two reasons. Number one... We'd already done, like, 70% of them, so whatever, right? Um, oh yeah, also, killing a whole lot of bosses rapid-fire gets you a lot of experience, too. Go figure. But the second reason was I ran into one dungeon here. The Windham Catacombs? No, that's not it. That's it. Gelmir, Hero's Grave. That's one. Now, I'm going to show this to you, because I actually liked this dungeon. It is the only one I liked, but... It was like the second one I did, because there's actually one other boss. I, I lied. There's one of the boss we haven't done, but it's not really a boss. That's why I, I kind of missed it. We still need to get uh, Death Seeds in order to give to Malekith 
in order to fight him and then finish his quest, right? So I googled where all the death seeds are. This is this is the beginning of this whole process. First thing I did was like, all right, what bosses are we missing? By the way, this dungeon, if you happen to remember it. Let's go ahead and trigger that. Come on. You know you want to. I can see you down there. Now, this is a fun one. I actually had to Google a solution to this one, to be completely honest. Once I did, I was sufficiently amused by it to go ahead and give the positive for this dungeon. I'll show it to you, I'll show it to you. Give me that. Give me that. Anyways, so this whole process started while I was trying to find death seeds. I was like, must find death seeds. Apparently this is shown in the trailer. I'll have to take your word on that. But I didn't have a trailer. I had nothing. So I did this the old-fashioned way. Googling it! I gotta show you something else, speaking of Googling, by the way. Bunch of assassins. Bunch of boring dudes. Trap, which we've already disabled. I mean, they could just get real bones and go like... If they wanted to. Wrong way. Gotta go the wrong way. It's part of the RNG manipulation. You might think, oh my god, Lore, you gotta be careful. You have 170,000 souls. Yeah, that's, that's not that much at the point I'm at right now. That would not be a big loss, to be completely blunt. I'm not sure I'll get another point of anything for the rest of this game, to be completely honest with you. So, do you mind? Okay. Oh my god, Eva. So, usual problem. It's a chariot thingy, right? I'll show you the level in just a sec, I swear. So, this is a problem. And I'm like, uh... Uh... And yeah, sure enough, the solution to this... I'm just gonna tell you this right now, is to go this way, drop down here... I'll just do it. Oh, that would be awesome, Vigil, but no. Drop down here to a completely unrelated little section here. Grab this flower. Very important. Gotta get that flower. Kill this person, because they're in the way. Round. There's apparently a joke weapon in here. I don't know if I got it. I've got a lot of loot I need to dump. I've picked up lots of stuff for the past couple of days. Uh, okay, well, we missed the jump, but you can see what happens. We're supposed to get up to that thing, and then we're supposed to fall down on the chariot and let uh, it carry us across the lava. And that's the solution to the dungeon. And I liked it. So I'm like, cool, this is actually kind of neat. And then I realized, oh god, that was actually kind of neat. Damn it! And I was very upset about that. Because of the fact that it was kind of neat, meant I now had to go do all the other dungeons in case there was another one that was ne kind of neat. Spoiler alert! there weren't any. That was the only dungeon that was worth a damn. Although there is something, and I want to discuss the possibility of a negative for this. Or an aggregate negative. Now, I already actually linked this on the Discord, so some of you know what's coming. So, I'm going back through here, and I'm like, oh, okay. Because I knew there was something I missed here. Clear the road a little bit. Give me a sec, give me a sec. Hang on. 700,000 enemies here for no reason. We done. We done. Okay. 
So I happen to notice that. That door that's pretty much straight up from me is clearly open. Like there's an actual opening there. Now I thought maybe I was seeing stuff, but I checked a few others and it's the only one that looks like that. Most of the others are just very clearly closed. So I'm like, okay, cool. Well, uh, I can make it! And then that happens. I then take my hands off the controls, alt-tab, and go Google it. Turns out, there is actually an uneven invisible path here, which also goes this way. And then leads down here, and this is the actual way to progress. Now, you might think, wow, you just did that really quickly. Yeah, I spent like 40 minutes here. By the way, dying at any point sends you all the way back up, so you got to do the whole process all over again. Really, Kay? Are you, are you sure that these things that I currently have hotkeyed, that I have spent so many of, that I've run out of bank on, are the things that I can use there? Are you sure about that, Kay? Uh, anyways, so this is a dick move, in my opinion. I am level 231. For whoever's at this, that's what I level. I uh, I got uh, endurance up to 60, so I can wear my goddamn armor. Finally, I was sick of it. And um, I pushed Dex up to, excuse me, I pushed Int up first. I pushed Int up to 55, which I actually Googled it. 55 is the 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 highest soft cap, and 55 is actually the highest soft cap of Dex. But as you can see, I didn't quite make that. Because I'm at the point now where everything, any level, requires 438,049 souls. Which means I did, yeah, <laughs> I don't have anything else to add to that. Now, the only argument I could hear against this being a negative is the fact that there were, I don't know if you noticed, but there were, uh, you can still kind of see them. Player messages kind of lighting the way there. You can see them up there kind of hovering. But that's not... I, I don't think that really qualifies to diminish this. See, the thing is, if any, if, if you've been paying attention, there are several other times where I've been like, I wonder if there's an invisible platform here. And there hasn't been. To my knowledge, correct me if I'm wrong, but this is the first time I've encountered an invisible platform in this entire game. Doing it just for one dungeon is kind of a dick move. When there's nothing to indicate that other than the fact that other players might have highlighted the way for you. So now K is leaving, which means the negative is fully codified. Thank you for that, K. I do appreciate your contribution. Where are farming souls? I'll actually show you. I'll show you right now. So first you have to do an entire quest chain, which is not easy, to get to here. And I got really, really, really good at this. I will show you the exact methodology I use. By the way, I have a cannon now. I gotta show that off at some point, but anyways. So, I'm gonna actually rest to reset the position. Because we want the bird in a very specific position. We go over to this platform right here. Go to this. We shoot between those things right there. Poke. Wait. Doesn't die. Doesn't matter. Run over here. Run off the thing because you lost your mouse. Because this game is coded by monkeys. Uh, game? There we go. Shoot. I see I was too late that time, because I was trying to make sure it actually had my mouse. Come on! There we go. Poke. Fall off. And, uh, so you can only farm so much of this with optimal efficiency, but there's this item you can use. It's a buff item that lasts three minutes, which increases your souls, and then there's an item you can equip, which increases your souls. And, um, hmm, excuse me, uh, that leads to, I think it's 17,000 per kill, and you could do that roughly every, like, 15 seconds. So, what I mean by that is, let's assume for a moment that you're sitting here, 
chatting and and having a meeting and having a having a work meeting and debating and discussing. And so you're just kind of mindlessly plunk, reset, plunk, reset, plunk, reset. And I look up and I've got like seven million souls and I'm like, oh, I should probably spend those. <laughs> and uh, that's the method. It's extraordinarily mind numbing, but I'm not sure there's anything technically faster in terms of X per time. Several people said, oh, go kill these things, but I found this to be faster in terms of per time, just substantially more boring. I mean, it is, if we're being honest, that dungeon really is just another example of walkthrough-itis. That just doesn't make it better. So anyways, I got a cannon now. Uh, come on, get my mouse. Get my mouse! God damn it, game. <sighs> okay. So I haven't tried this thing out yet. Okay, so that's attack. There we go. Okay. Apparently you have to do a heavy attack to shoot. I don't think it has ammo. Like, it looks like it's shooting an arrow. You see it there. So I... I hang on. So I currently have... Ugh, 95 arrows equipped. So hang on. You also can't move while aiming. Nope, it's not using arrows. I don't think it's using anything. I wonder if there's a build that actually uses this thing properly. What else have I picked? I picked up all sorts of nonsense. Uh, uh, great knife. Death's poker. Yeah, what is this thing? It's a hook great sword. I doubt it, Blade of All. At least not with the level of accuracy it would require to poke the bird from way over there. I'm also not sure if that has the range. Yeah, by the way, that's why I was doing that dungeon Plutonia. Because I wanted to do Malika's thing. See how it all ties back together here. What else have we picked up? Um, still can't equip that. That's funny. Because I haven't been raising strength. Uh, Bloody Helis. What's this one? It's an interesting rapier. I got a Manus Blade, an Omen Killer. That was a fun one. Family Heads. We're not even equipping that one. The Troll Hammer. Finally got that thing. Serpent Hunter. Sword Spear. Monster Saw. I don't know what that is. I guess that's actually it. I thought we got... Oh, no. We got a bunch of armor. That's what we got. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we've got the Gelmir Knight and the Bloodhound Knight and the Vulgar Militia Knight and the Skeletal Mask and the Perfumer Hood. We got a couple things. But we're back in our actual armor because we raised our endurance for a freaking reason. <sighs> Anyways. Switch back up, y'all. Uh, so, before we progress... Uh, yep. One here. Back to Frostland. Whoa, hold up. Oh shoot, I have the wrong thing equipped. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Ahem. Thank you. Much appreciate, Loke. As always, for two years of support. Thank you. Welcome to the two-year club. I'll put that anniversary sub towards that thing that you said, which is Company of Heroes. And thank you, G Juice. Thank you. I do always appreciate much, Lee. I'll put that towards Jack, too. 
Um, yeah, speaking of which, hang on, sir. Where's my review page? Um, What's the name of the place we're in right now? I've been calling it the Frozen Waste, but I don't know what the term is for it. What's that? Snowy area? I don't know. I was going to say, the constant... The, ah! Now you might screwed up my spelling. There we go. No field. There we go. Okay. Okay, sorry, right. <clears throat> Back into it. Uh, was there anything else I did off camera that was noteworthy? Oh! I did want to tell you one other thing. So, I killed, like, god, a dozen bosses. Like I said, I was just going down the list, making sure I killed all of them. And we have now killed everything except for Malekith. Uh, in every zone, except for the one we're in right now. So, yay! All bosses, and all dungeons. Which boss, for there was only one, do you think gave me issues? If you think it was Wormface, you're wrong. If you think it was the Mimic Tier, which was in the dungeon I was just showing off, you're still wrong. The Devil Abductors was kind of mean, but I managed it pretty quickly. I'll give you a hint, it was a boss I couldn't summon my summon for, so that probably contributed to the difficulty a bit. Snake-eating dude? Uh, no, no. He's right. The assassin? The assassin was actually kind of mean, but I got pretty lucky in my timing on that one, so I managed that one pretty quickly. Tachi? Nope. Some good guesses, honestly. No, I was kind of mulching bosses. Uh, and I'm not trying to brag. It I was it was actually surprised by it. But then I ran into the hardest boss in the game. Now, that sounds like a joke, but I want to stress that I died to this guy 20 something times. I'm only not I'm not sure of the exact number because I stopped counting after 20. Thank you, Diesel Edge. Always appreciate muchly. Thank you. Now I'm just I have to show you this because I don't know how to describe it otherwise. Are we in teleport range? We're in teleport range. Cool. I'll put that towards dealer's choice. No, I kept dying to this boss. How many of you even know what I'm talking about? So, for those unaware, if you come here at night, the uh, the guy, the uh, the ball bearer guy, shows up and he's like, "Hi, I'm here to kill you." And I'm like, "Okay, I've already killed two other versions of him. In fact, there was one I never apparently killed up uh, here at the Church of Vows, which was a bit of a challenge." But no, the guy shows up. And he just, he literally two shots me. And I'm like, whoa! Okay. So, I'm like, alright, let's, let's reset the fight. And you'll notice I can't summon my ad here. So that's fun. 
But yes, he has a absolutely huge HP pool, and he hits harder than anything I've seen in this game. His sword also has a... Th one of his attacks is his sword could hit from about here, like assuming he was that merchant there. He could hit me from this distance. So that's his reach. So I'm like, okay, whatever. So I get in a second attempt, and a third attempt, and a fourth attempt. And I'm just kind of mindlessly grinding this guy down. Um, and then you see those T-Rex dogs. Well, if the fight goes on too long, they're actually guaranteed to eventually roam up here and join the fight. Those aren't that easy, even now. They, they still cause a problem. And yeah, the, it, it, resetting this guy really sucks, because what you have to do... Uh, I think. Let me, let, the method I kept using is I would rest, re -for flash forward to night, get up, rest, get up, and that would actually spawn him. <laughs> and I do that every attempt. And like I said, it was 20 plus attempts to kill this jackass. The reward for this? This, this is funny. Check this out. I had the dogs come over several times, Bretzel, including the time I actually killed them, which amused the hell out of me. Uh, this one, I think, yeah. But yes, the reward for killing that particular version of the ball bearer hunter is a specific ball bearer ring. Let's see, I've got a couple of these at this point. The gravity stone one. That's specifically the one you get. What does that get you? The ability to buy gravity stones. That's it. That That's, that's the reward for killing what so far is honestly the hardest boss I've fought in this game. Unfair hard, but still hard. So the most bullcrap boss I've fought in the game. Yeah. Anyways. Well, then I, I, I then I think more money is going to be needed to put toward the Chichus, because if you look at the list, it's not even close to funded. Anyways, so that all sucked. Now that I'm done whining, let's go do this stupid dungeon I just unlocked, because there's actually really only like five dungeons left in the game. We might, we might as well just do all of them at this point. And yeah, let me be very clear. Well, he is a... The thing that pisses me off so much is he's properly difficult because he's got a good move set and good reaction time and good opener. So like there's, you know, there's a, there's a pattern to it. But he's also very badly difficult because he hits like a goddamn truck. I want to stress, look at my health. He was two-shotting me with that level of health. Just wham, wham, gone. If I screw up twice, I have lost the fight. Like, I... Anyways, I think this is our first ice cave. Uh, no, I was, so one of the strategies I started using is rather than using mana on buffs, I was using mana on that, because he has uh, relatively low magic defense, at least, maybe I'm wrong, but it seemed like I was doing more damage with magic than with straight up hits, so I was kind of whittling him down. It was kind of a hit, dodge, hit, dodge sort of affair. And that's when I finally, it eh, got him, was when I did that. Oh, you guys. Could you, could you not? Thanks. Let's switch weapons. Uh. Hmm. Hang on. Thanks for waiting. Very patiently. Piss off. It's not nice to be stun locked, is it, asshole? Oh yeah, actually, there was one other boss that gave me. Well, okay, that's not true. There's like five bosses that I had to try on. But one of the weird ones, one that surprised me, was one of the death birds of which I fought like six. There's a lot of death birds in this game, but it was specifically the death bird that was right here, on this area right here. 
And I, it, I guess it was just because he had stats, because his attack pattern was exactly the same as every other death bird. I don't know what else to add to that other than, ugh. Yeah, death birds. <laughs> death birds are death birds. What else can I add to that? What is that person wielding? <laughs> That's another thing I found increased my enjoyment of the game, by the way. Playing it on mute. Since, you know, I was just watching stuff or talking to people. I mean, these people's feet, you know. I'd question why this is killing them, but honestly, it would probably really, really hurt to have however many pounds or uh, kilos uh, shield just slammed into your feet over and over, right? Like that, that probably doesn't feel very pleasant. Oh, that sucks, Emerald Magnus. Hopefully this won't be a crystalline boss. You know what? Hang on. I mean, there's several unique fights in the game, but... I think of the dungeons, there are about ten fights that they just share over and over. And then there's several overworld fights that just repeat, like the Death Bird, or the Cavalry Guy, the Nazgul, as several people call it. Nope. No time for you. Maybe you weren't listening to me. Yeah, I was talking to my brother-in-law yesterday, because he was asking if I recommend this game, and I said, if you like Dark Souls, you've got to be kidding me. I said, if you like Dark Souls, you will like this game. Speaking of repeat bosses, we've already fought one of these. Let's get our real weapons on really quick. Do this faster than this. Damn it, cannot change equipment at this time. Well, yeah, that's 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 a thing. Uh okay. Alright, please change equipment now. Yep, 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 that's that's cool. Can we not? Yeah, we're dead. Okay. <laughs> Couldn't even change back to my sword. Man, I I don't actually think I believe you, Sonic Doctor. No offense or nothing, but it really doesn't feel that way. I mean I do I do believe you. It's just <sighs> The repeat bosses overwhelm the non repeat bosses. I'm just gonna say it bluntly like that, because that's exactly how it feels to me. Including the boss fight I just died to, while we're on the subject. Hell, even the boss fight I fought earlier, which was the Volcano Dude, was a repeat boss fight. I mean, hell, 
how many versions, uh, not versions, sorry. We, I'm saying this wrong. We've already fought a story boss twice, even. With Mr. Grafted. But you are right, and that does need to be notated. There are plenty of unique bosses in this game. I've given positives for a decent number of the, the unique bosses in this game. Because they're sometimes fun fights. Unlike the ball bearing guy, who's just bullcrap. Yeah, exactly. There's. I have given this game quite a few gameplay positives. And while we still need to do the audit, I stand by the majority of that. Maybe not. Wrong button twice in a row there. Okay. Yeah, I noticed it's the same name. I don't remember if it's the same title. Oh, shoot. Stars of Darkness, is that what the other one was called? Because I actually don't remember. Doubly not what I meant to do. Oh, waste. Oh, get up! I got the meteor spell. Uh, there it is. I was like, where's the exit? Ah, okay. I do wonder. Like, are these just innate aliens? Are they products of the void? Are they actually Outer Gods? Are the other Outer Gods is... Like, are they servants of other Outer Gods? A lot of questions about these.
<laughs> okay. Another one down. Yeah, it's Dark Souls. Who knows? Uh, hang on, let me pull up my list. So I think there's another dungeon we didn't do that we currently have access to. Give me a minute, give me a minute. Uh, it, there really aren't that many dungeons left, believe it or not. So there's Hidden Path, which uh, I don't remember if we've done that or not. And we haven't done either of those two dungeons. And then there's... This one? I don't remember if we've done this. We've clearly been up here, so we'll, we'll make a marker there just to check. And... Uh, I'm not sure what that is. Oh, never mind. It's right there. I don't know if we did that. I don't think we actually did that dungeon. I think we just poked at it. Was that where the jelly... I think you're right. I think you're right. So, yeah, we did that. Hang on. Let me just check some. Oh, speaking of which. So, I also killed all the bosses, right? And I was looking for the ones I missed. And, of course looking for death seeds. So there's this one boss I was missing. Now I say this a little bit amusingly because you may or may not remember we've been through this area before and each time we go through these giant skeletons pop up and go ah we're here to kill you. Now previously that has been an indicative of a nearby mariner but I never found the mariner. Well here's my little pro tip to you. The mariner is actually down there. He's like hiding in that little side area, which you can't, can't even see normally, and just summoning tons and tons of stuff up here. So FYI, that's where you kill him. I'm going to be completely honest, I had to Google that one. Like, I actually thought maybe if I kill the skeleton, it'll spawn him? So I actually sat there and killed one of those skeletons, that one right there specifically. That took a while. Those things have a lot of health. We're not done with bosses, but we're getting very close to being done with bosses. Alright, so we're just gonna check something super quick. This shouldn't take long. Because usually there's a little micro, micro dungeon in these places, and I'm not sure if we did it when we were helping the sisters out. So let's just look around really quick, see if there's any staircases going down. There aren't cool, there aren't whatever. There it is, right there. Uh, we'll finish the game this week, Blade Travel. Guaranteed. Even doing 90% of the content, which I have recommitted to, we will finish this game this week. Yep, okay, so we did this one. Cool. Alright, so we did that. We can mark that off the list. So that means we've got that dungeon up there, which I don't think we've poked at. Let's go ahead and poke at this really quick. Oh, right. So, sorry, my brother-in-law was asking if I recommend this game. And the answer to that was complicated, but I will go ahead and give my a formal and professional opinion on this matter. If you like Dark Souls, buy this game. It's a better Dark Souls. If you don't like Dark Souls, but think you might like Dark Souls, this is probably a really good game to jump into. If you do not like Dark Souls, do not buy this game. And that, that's pretty much the, the, the gradient right there. For good and for bad, this is a very Dark Souls game, but better. Like, almost across the board, honestly. There are a few issues and problems, as the 30-plus negatives show. Yeah, asterisk, asterisk, asterisk. But I stand by it. If you don't know if you like Dark Souls, well, that was the, that's the middle category. This is a good thing to see if you like this franchise. Starting with Dark Souls 1, fresh, having never played any of the franchise, is not something I would immediately recommend. Although I usually don't recommend that. I usually don't recommend people start with the beginning. I usually recommend people start with something that feels most like that thing. And if it, it's something that works for you, if it's something you're into, then you go back and then you try out and the previous entries and see, you know, how those work for you. Put another way, I don't recommend people start with Mega Man 1 and I don't recommend people start with Final Fantasy 1. Okay. 
fuel. We got more snail snakes. Snail snakes. Yes, you know, honestly, Thief 1's another good example of that. If you're into... Th okay, go away. Enough time for you. Go away. Actually, I was going to say the same thing, Blade Duval. Final Fantasy IV is, def is specifically the Steam version, not the Pixel Remaster, is the version I recommend you start Final Fantasy with. That answer hasn't changed since that came out, honestly. Can I help you? Apparently not. And Mega Man, I usually recommend you start with either two or four. Four is probably a better Mega Man to start with, if we're being completely honest. And since this is Dark Souls 4, that actually continues the pattern. And since I usually recommend people start Mario, uh, the Mario franchise on World, continues the pattern. I'm, I'm sensing a trend here. This, this seems like a whole lot of not worth my time. So we're just gonna nope out of here. Peace! Speaking of repeat bosses, I'm not sure there is such a thing as a dungeon boss that isn't a repeat. I'm not saying that to be insulting, I think that's literally true. Is there even a, a Thief 4? Even if we count that abomination that came out a few years ago? Oh jeez. Oh jeez. There's flame everywhere. There's flame everywhere. Blob monster! Blob monster! You're done. There you go. Boy, I was an attack. The third one? Music hasn't stopped. I was actually about to say, what snail? And then my minion, who was a good minion, good minion, scritch, scritch, scritch. It's like, oh, I see something to kill. Uh, thank you, Crystal Ship, very, very much for the sub. If you give me a moment, I'll say thank you. Come on, here we go. Thank you. If you know what you want to put that towards, do please let me know. One P five. There we go. And thank you, Sakage. Thank you. Always. I will put that towards dealer's choice. Okay. Uh, so that dungeon's done. So we can mark that one off the list. It's that one. That one. Um, don't have those two. Or those. But there are two here. 
including one. Where is that? Looks like here ish. So let's head over here. Let's do these two. Whoops. Once we've done these two, there are only two maybe remaining. So we're extraordinarily close to just being done with the dungeons. The micro dungeons, to be more clear about that. You can see why I decided to just pull the trigger and say, screw it, you know. Just get these over with. Aw. Oh, wow, the AC video. Oh, that takes me back. Poor AC. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. There's emulators going. <laughs> yes, I am. Thank you for noticing, Roman Cure. I have been um, doing more exercising, and my bed is better. Yeah. I also stretch more regularly now. Even though I stopped stretching on camp, that is to say taking stretch breaks, I do take stretch breaks throughout the day, and I just make them more. Which arguably isn't what I want to do, but it's a compromise, so whatever, and it's clearly working. It's funny, because I'm actually more sore today than I normally am, because yesterday I finished making a wall. Speaking of which, for those of you who even remember that, uh, I, we, we'll go with we, I don't want to take all the credit, successfully finished the wall yesterday. For those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, my sister and I have been building up a wall. Uh, I wonder we'll put this one up. Uh, a wall to uh, out to the front of her. Uh, so she's up here. This is her house. And, like, at the very edge of the house, there's a fairly slanted hill going down, which causes all kinds of issues, especially with water. And so we, she actually told uh, contacted her mother, who is an architectural engineer, to figure out, you know, how do we how do we make this? How do we build this up to a point where we'll no longer start causing degradation and possibly uh, foundation damage? So we spent a decent chunk of last year's spring and summer starting the the work of building a wall, and most of it was done. It's just then we had to pause because she had a child, and you know a few other things happened, and and now it's it's back to the point where we can get back to working on it. And she was tired of it not being done, so we did it. And finished the wall, and it's awesome. Uh, my sister and I have no blood relation, Cubic Skull. We adopted each other a little over a decade ago at this point. I usually refer to her mother as my mother, uh, stepmother, because there's not really a good equivalence there. But she's good folk, I like her. There we are. And then we went and I bought her a whole bunch of flowers that she could plant in the result so it would look pretty. And I'm really happy about it. But anyways, point being, believe it or not, hauling around bricks and, and you know getting the mortar and all that fun stuff, that, that takes a toll on you. So I'm actually pretty sore today. But that's okay. I do not mind. But yes, my niece has no blood relation to me. To continue. Although she's been my niece since uh, she was born, so... Uh, no, actually. I need to... Remind me after we do this dungeon, because I'm still at plus 22 on that one. And see if I have the items for that. I've been doing... a whole lot of stuff, and I've been making care to loot as I go, too. Hopefully I will have enough things to finally max out my Uchi Gutana. And if not, well, whatever. I mean, it's actually funny. So, uh, my eldest niece I met when she was about eight months old. My middle niece, I met her when she was uh, about two weeks old. And my youngest niece I met when she was just over two days old. So I told my sister, you know, jokingly. I was like, so, um, next time you have a kid, I'm gonna be there when she's born, right? Just to keep the trend going.
Speaking of repeat bosses. Oh my. Oh my again. Oh, okay. I guess I just get the pick. Oh, they're high case. I didn't say hi to you specifically. I'm not ignoring you, I swear. You know what my favorite trick is? I have an enemy who is scripted to have an auto attack when you go by, no matter whether you're stealthing or running or anything, just to try and have a gotcha. G O T C H A. Gotcha. And I mention that because that's actually an aspect of game design that's bad. Yeah, no, that just occurred to me, Rex, so I'm giving a negative for gotchas. It could be argued this game deserves more than one negative for gotchas, but that gets into debatability, because I'm not sure on that one. And, of course, the thing I have in my mind is, well, you know, how bad is it compared to other gotchas? So that's how we determine that. And I don't think it's worse than, for example, Ninja Gaiden. How bad do we think the gotchas are on this game? I have a lot of poise. Yes, okay, that's actually why I'm wearing this. My poise value right now is somewhere on this screen. It's 133. I don't actually think I can get it higher than that. If I can, I don't know how. Yeah, you notice enemy damage is way too high. I also have really good defenses on this armor. I think it's possible to have higher defenses. I'm not even sure about that, honestly. It is possible to have more HP, although only barely, since I'm already at the soft cap on that. In fact, I'm actually past the soft cap on that. Um, okay. I'll help you. I mean, yeah, I'm level 200 and what? 31. And, uh, you see how I'm doing. Right. Go, or just don't do any of that. That's exactly what I wanted to happen. I was just thinking to myself, you know, rather than the jump button working, I want to just walk off the ledge and fall and get hit by something. And darn it if this game doesn't deliver. Uh, now I'm turned around. How was I? There we go. Go away! My wish came true! What's, what's that song? Dreams really do come true. I don't know how that goes. Way. Why is it not jumping? Is someone explain that to me?
gonna jump well before I get there this time. Up. 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 Okay, okay, that's cool. Everything's cool. We're all cool here. This is a game that was made for platforming. Oh. Too much uh, animation canceling. Or animation uh, locking, excuse me. The opposite of animation canceling. I can't even walk on the damn thing. Okay. Now we lose the mouse, because of course we do. There we go. Just about any time you see me do this rapid fire for some reason, it's because I'm trying to get the game to recapture the mouse. If, if anybody's ever been wondering about that. That's exactly what I wanted to happen. That's a, That's brilliant. I'm sorry, Gum Gum. I missed all of that. <laughs> Although, if you're talking about the person in the mansion, uh, uh, someone wanting to live in a... No, it's the, it the person who didn't want to live in a mansion, right? I mean, honestly, who would want to live in a mansion? Elon Musk? Bought Twitter? Um, okay, so... Boss time! Very few resources, but it's okay! It's okay! I'm sure it won't be something that's a repeat boss that's overtuned. Get your guesses in now! What repeat boss is it? Oh, it's this guy. Okay. You got a little, um... Hair and up here and on your axe and on your clothes and your boots. You've got a lot of that going on, buddy. I think my minion could solo you, but I don't, I don't want to make them do all the work, so goodbye. And another one down. Okay, let's go get the one north here. And then we'll figure out the other thing. Oh, yeah. Feel that visibility. Yeah! <laughs> yeah, by the way, who is Let Me Solo Her? I'm aware of the name and the fact that it's a meme, and that's it. My next wish is that I'm going to not find this next dungeon until I die and have to start over finding the next dungeon again. That is my fondest wish. Whoop. Where am I? Of course, I can't put my menu. I'm not that bad in my map. Because why would I be able to... Okay, so there's going to be a cliff edge up here. I know that. Okay, I found the cliff edge. <laughs> Wish succeeded. All right. Um... My wishes are that good. Just, I'm, you don't even know. Alright, Giga Pudding, I wish that you get a really good cup of tea today. I mean, if I'm not mistaken, there's very little uh, unavoidable damage in this game, so... In a truly hypothetical state, it would be possible to not take any damage, thereby rendering armor completely meaningless. I would never even begin to think that I could do something like that, but, you know, theoretical possibilities. Oh, 
I'll actually be honest, I don't know what happened to Rockefeller, so I don't have a comparison there, Gungo. I mean, even Moog, who has... Sorry, I take that back. Moog had an unavoidable attack. But, I think you could kill him before he uses it. I almost managed that. And I'm garbage, so... Surely, someone else could do a better job of killing Moog before he does his uninterruptible... Or, excuse me, unavoidable attack. Alright, so the blizzard's back. That's good, that's good. Yep, yep. Which, of course, I will not be doing, okay. Yeah, you'd still need weapons. Oh, right, I asked people to... Okay, once I get to this dungeon, remind me to go poke at my weapons. I meant to do that earlier, and then I forgot, and then I forgot again. And I'm officially tired of the lack of music. Let's get some cold music going on here. There we go. There we go. How else am I going to know if they're sharp, Giga Pudding? I don't like Reavers personally, Trihexia. Although, that's more of a using them than a being used by them. One. Okay, okay, cool, cool. are these things? I don't even know. Like, I'm only barely aware of the lore. I have no idea what these things are. I've only seen them here and in the Moog area. Bill. Albinarix. Remind me what Albinarix are. This specific song is one of the Donkey Kong countries. Uh, I'm not sure which one, because that would involve old tabbing. And I know you want to get me killed. Okay, here. This is specifically Donkey Kong Country Returns, Weighty Ways. Because Donkey Kong Country Returns and Tropical Freeze have better music than the originals. Come at me. Looks like I need to go up again. Get my mouse back. There we go. Homunculi, thank you, that's the word, that's that's the answer to the question I was asking. They are homunculi, built by Sir Jeffrey Tilworth Latslatsley, in his great efforts to try and recreate uh, a contest he had once when he was in high school, for the ugliest person in town, and for some reason he could never quite get it right, but by golly he tried. This is in honor of his terrific sacrifice. I know that he existed, Gungam, and that's about it. Oh my god, that makes so much sense, Evo. And then he's trying to make something uglier than him so that he's no longer the ugliest in the land. It's like the inverse Fair Maiden thing. Putrid Avatar, my favorite. Unfortunately for you, you're candy at this point. Way too much health. Let's go candy. That's bad. That's bad. Oh, yeah. Dip, 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 dip. Ah. 
really bad aim on that one. Just trying to make a fool of me for calling you candy, are you? Well, you're dead, so you failed. Alright, so that's gone. Now we need to find this stupid dungeon. Here's the stupid thing. Hang on, let's just Google it. Let's just not spend time here. Cave of the Forlore. Cave of the Forlore. Well, the Howling Tree is pure evil, so that makes perfect sense. Oh, wait, no, the Erd Tree is pure evil. So that make these guys cool. Why are they trying to kill me? No. I haven't seen any Takoda, but there might be some. Uh, what do I think about Twitter going private? Let's start by removing Elon Musk from reality. One second. There we go. Elon Musk just Thanos out of existence. And the world's a better place. But um, what do I think about the very idea of Twitter going private as opposed to being public? I'm actually in favor of that because I've been paying attention to the shareholder and board meetings of Twitter for several months now as this has been circling. And it boils down to this re recurring theme that people keep pushing for Twitter to be, and I quote, more like Facebook in terms of trying to squeeze more money out of itself as a platform. I'm just, you, you know me, I'm not particularly in favor of the economic model of be a worse business to make more money. So. Screw the current leadership and board and financial obligations of Twitter. However, then we have to bring Elon Musk back into reality and acknowledge that he's the one who's buying it. So... At it down there, maybe. It doesn't look like it is. If it's not right here, then it has to be down. It has to be down. Just by logical discourse. So unless I'm missing something here, it's got to be down. Alright, so down we go. Uh, so I actually have elaborated on this before, Roman Cure. So rather than answer you, I'm just going to point you to one of my streaminations, okay? Give me a second, I'll give you the exact name of the episode. Do you mind? Oh my god, this is the worst enemy in the game right here. Alright, <clears throat> Go look up my Streamination's episode on The Last Laugh, Season 9, Episode 14, The Net Last Laugh. Because I actually discuss principles of comedy there. That being said, whether that'll make jokes more or less funny for you is up to you. Now, I, it actually doesn't bother me all that much because I like understanding why things work and why things don't work. But that's me. You know, there's the often stated saying, if you explain the joke, you ruin the joke, but I don't actually agree with that, poisonally. I think that's already down here. You know, there's things like the rule of threes, there's the... The tempo thing, the timing. Um, 
there's non sequitur humor, there's... I don't have a list in front of me. There's all sorts of different types. Is this just way down? Do I just need to go down to base level? Setup and payoff? Yep, that's one of them. There's also setup delay payoff. In fact, delay is its own form of humor, which has its own format. So there's, for example, uh, setup delay payoff, setup delay delay payoff, and repeat infinitely. But here's the thing. There's actually a gradient of acceptability when it comes to delay. So let's say that I tell a joke, and you're waiting for the payoff, right? And you're just sitting there waiting. You know it's coming. You know it's happening. But it hasn't happened. And if I wait too long, but not longer, then it becomes irritating. At that point, you're just like, get on with it. But if I wait a little bit longer than that, the joke becomes the delay. The, de the, the payoff is no longer the joke. The format's changed. And now the joke is just the fact that I'm delaying. Then it becomes funny again. But the thing is, that continues to loop. There it is. Found it. Because if I delay, whoa, uh, too much again, then it goes right back to being not funny again. And yeah, there's all sorts of math when it comes to uh, humor. Which I, I personally find fascinating, but then again, I'm a geek. So what the hell do I know? Oh yeah, there's also anti-jokes. The anti-joke is the... An anti-joke is where you don't tell a joke, and that's the joke. Um, I, there's like a classic example that I can't think of right off the top of my head. That? What the hell am I looking at? Is that a reflection? Nope, I'm just looking down through glass. That's cute. Thank you, Dr. Winter. Thank you. I do always appreciate your support. I will put that towards Darkest Dungeon. Thank you. Give me one moment, please. It is Rex. You can always tell it's Shimamura. He's got a very distinctive style. dungeon that I'm not sure I like. It's just, uh... Yep. <clears throat> There's also, uh... So, referential humor has its own formulas to it as well. Now, the thing about referential humor is... The, the the general formula for referential humor is the more esoteric it is, the funnier it is, because it's a rewarding thing. It rewards the player, excuse me, the, the viewer, the listener, for getting it, right? That's also why you try not to explore or expand upon referential humor. In fact, I've been trying to get better about not explaining my references when I do when I drop those, like in my ruminations, for example. Because the whole point is the person's supposed to feel, you know, smart and therefore more gratified for the experience of getting it. Sorry, Roman Cure. Yeah, no, it, Dean Bidian's correct. correct. It's, it's the puzzle game of humor. give you a low tier example of that because for those of you who watch a YouTube channel called Man Shorts they have a series they do every Sunday where they come out with their form I love their format in fact I've actually thought about doing something similar myself the way the format works is they play custom D&D campaigns which are based on other concepts and when I say other concepts I'm being vague because they hit the gamut they've done a firefighter edition They've done a Disneyland edition. They have Florida Man, which is a regular thing to do. Um, they had a whole series recently when they went to Hawaii. I, I recommend the channel. Plug, plug, plug. But regardless of that, they recently did a Disney World edition, and I'm just going to give this away now. They started making Kingdom Hearts references without 
you know, explaining them. And again, that was awesome. You know, I, I actually rather dug that because of the aforementioned. Because, you know, hey, I get that. Plus, they were amusing jokes in their own right. Oh, hello. I didn't realize you were alive. Let's fix that. Stop being alive. Yes, Florida Man. So what they do for the Florida Man editions, plural, is they look up actual real-life headlines and uh, crime stories that happen in Florida, and then they have each of the characters play someone who's playing D&D, &D, except that's what actually happened. Again. And it comes across as just as insane as you're thinking, because, you know, someone actually did that stuff. That's the joke. Uh, that's uh, absurdist humor, I think. No, that's not right. That's uh, what is that called? There is a term for that, other than Dilbert. Because Dilbert did that too. South Park does this a lot too. God, what's it called? It's when you portray. Uh, so there's there's two styles of this. This is ridiculous. Come here. You know, actually, I don't care about you. Loot. Um, there's something where you portray something ridiculous as if it's serious, and then there's something where you portray something serious as if it's ridiculous. That's why I call those the inverse of each other. So, Florida Man and Dilbert both portray the serious as if it's silly. You know, the whole joke there is the fact that, oh, shit, no one would ever do that, except it's based on real-life stuff. And we're backtracking. You want to fly in here? I don't mind. You'll be at my level so I can kill you. I admit I look forward to their weekly stuff when it comes to the uh, Man Short series, so... I'm a weirdo. I was watching some while grinding uh, just yesterday when I was watching the, floor, the uh, Disney World thing. Anyways, and then of course the inverse is that is what South Park does. They portray the, ser the silly as serious. Um, I can't think of his name. Marsh, I want to say. Stan Marsh. He's a perfect example of that. He portrays something that's absolutely ludicrous or stupid as if it's real. As if it's serious. You know, like, uh, there's an episode where they're like, Oh my god! Global warming's coming! Ah! And you've got the serious, deathly music straight out of, you know, straight out of an action flick. And it's like, duh, 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 duh. It's Randy Marsh, thank you. I don't know my names, obviously. Duh, duh, duh. And everyone's, and the camera's doing that shaky ch cam, like the chase cam thing. And then the camera pans out and you see that nothing's happening because nothing's happening. And there you go. Silly portrayed as serious. I can keep going, Roman Cure, but you got me off on a topic, and I apologize for everyone else. Oh, this is America. Yeah, but you get the idea. There, there are formulas. There are equations when it comes to humor, just like there are for everything, really. Like, we were talking about horror earlier. Um, to, you know the spider hands? And we actually briefly mentioned this. It's, it's a perfect example of using math when it comes to designing horror. Okay, you take something horrifying, and you portray it in a horrifying way, and bam, spider hands. That really is it. It's, it's as simple as that, but there are ways to mathematically design something that is horrifying. You just take ideas and concepts and you figure out how you can uh, reapply them or mix and match them. I didn't see that the new Dune game came out. I thought it was still in early access or in early release or whatever the hell they actually call that these days. Ooh. Of course you can, Evo. Well, actually, okay, let me walk that back. No, you cannot. However, you can just do it without understanding the math behind what you're doing. Which is what the enormous number of people do. Some people just make horrifying things, or dramatic things, or romantic things, or emotional things, or whatever, without meaning to, right? Like, they don't intend to follow formulaic pr progression. They don't intend to... Uh, no, not even close, Eon Dragon. Not even in the in the in the ballpark. But watch our Portal 2 run sometime. Um 
So, so some people can just either do it innately or they can stumble into it or whatever, right? Like, it just be like the Kwong, and here's this thing. And someone else could come by like me and do a YouTube channel explaining why they do it, and maybe the person who made it doesn't even know that they did it. They, didn't even, they don't even know the fact that they were accomplishing that. It's like, oh, cool, that's how that works. This, I, I don't think I like this dungeon. I think this dungeon sucks. I'm 90% certain that we are backtracking it because I don't know how to progress at this point. Well, yeah, even Witcher 3, which was done in the old system, had more points than this. I don't even know how Witcher 3 would score nowadays. Uh, yeah, so we're just going to go with this. We actually have the dungeon walk through right here. Okay, so blah, 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 blah. Okay, that's extremely vague. I might have to actually look up a YouTube. So let me read these directions for you word for word. You ready for this? Uh, scroll down. You will find ten spirit flame arrows and a rune arc, guarded by a misbegotten. That's where the flying guy was? You remember that? Immediately after that, return to the previous room, and by climbing again, you will reach a new area. Informative. Hang on, let's make our way back down there. Pretty sure we already did this, that's because we did. Get some Metroid in here. It, it's, it's correct. I'm just gonna start climbing everything I can climb. Nope, okay. Um, Elden Ring dot wiki dot Fextra Life Dot com is the primary source I've been using. It's actually been pretty useful for the most part. I'm backtracking. Like, it has been pretty helpful in a lot of things. And then sometimes it hasn't been. So, consider this one of the exceptions. Like, finding this place to begin with. You know what the directions were for finding this place? It's southeast of the tree... I could see that, Evo. Okay, so here's the room where we had the thing. So, return, so, blah, blah, blah. Return to the previous room, and by climbing again, you will reach a new area. Okay, so pre return to previous room. Return to previous room. Find, I may have to actually pull out a real torch, which I think I could do. Hey! All right, what do we got here? Climbing again. We'll be climbing. Ah, yep, definitely climbing. Yeah, a lot of them do that, Plutonia. And by a lot of them, I mean a lot of wikis. I hate that practice, personally. I'm pretty sure I've had their bots try to sell me on using that practice before, and I have said no. West side of the room. Well, that would be over here. Um, so there's where that loot item was, which we got earlier. This game has gotten uh, three walkthrough items negative so far. Uh, maybe this? Eh, maybe? Maybe? Oh, hey, this looks new. This looks new. It was right. All I had to do was climb. God, Lord, pay attention! Listen, anybody who plays Elden Ring using their eyes is not playing the game right. I joke. One of the things I was telling my brother-in-law yesterday about this is, despite the usual memes and the usual whatever, I've actually only had a grand total of two people be dicks about this whole thing. And both of them were on YouTube. No, sorry, one of them was on YouTube, one of them was on Twitch. The person on Twitch left fairly quickly, and it wasn't a name I recognized, so whatever on that front. And the person on YouTube can go to hell. Excuse me, jellyfish. I don't wish to kill you. What? 
took forever to let me load that. Yeah, exactly, Sean. Talk to the Ronnie doll, which doesn't react to you, three times at this one bonfire. So I remember this one because he's actually using uh, the great sword of um, Godfrey, if I'm not mistaken. Like you can actually see the runes in the sword there. The Elden runes. These fights suck in general, so be a little careful here. Not gonna change the music, though, and that's why. Goodbye. Yep, the Golden Order Greatsword. Is it Radagon? Mm -hmm. No? Well, I mean, it might be it's Radagon. I thought it was the other one. GTA's form of humor? Uh, GTA leans heavily towards the uh, the aforementioned, which they take something serious and treat it silly. Like the Dilbert thing I mentioned earlier. Uh, usually referred to as satire or parody. Which are actually different things, but whatever. These things have too much health, by the way. I don't mean anything by that, I'm just commenting on it. They're called land octopi or land squids, depending on who you ask. Uh, mm, great sword of might. Uh, oh, never mind. It is actually uh, Radagon. Great sword made of light, modeled after the Elden Ring itself, forged by the king consort Radagon to proudly symbolize the tenets of the Golden Order, one of the legendary armaments. Telltale signs betray that this was once a great sword bequeathed to him by his first wife, Renala. There we go. That's what I was thinking of. Because remember, when you give you give someone a great sword that is a magic great sword as a sign of bonding, just like the one that Ronnie gave to me. That's a good question, Traxy. I don't know. I haven't played Doom three in a while. But funnily enough, me and my brother-in-law we talked a lot yesterday. Uh, we're talking about the Doom series because he's going through Doom four for the first time. I clamped my mouth shut as soon as he said that because I want him to experience it for himself, but uh, I'm hoping he likes it because I loved the crap out of Doom 4. But that's neither here nor there. Uh, have we already done... Oh, right, right. I can't... I forgot to do it again. Okay, we're just we're just going here. We're just going here. It's just happening. Yes, Doom 4, sometimes referred to as Doom 2016, a.k.a. Doom 4. It's Doom 4. Live with it. Yes, Doom 3... Yes! I know why I have a de health debuff. I thought we got rid of that. But whatever. Uh, no, I don't want it to. You. I will admit, Doom 3 is better in the beginning, and then it just falls off pretty badly. But that's a good, by memory, I haven't played Doom 3 since it came out, so, grain of salt. Uh, I do hope to review pretty much all the Dooms at some point. We've already done Doom 64, uh, and I'd like to do Doom 1, Doom 2, Doom 3, Doom 4, and Doom 5 at some point. But, that's not good right there. You. I took you for no matter, lay out your own. Yes, so I still don't have Smithing Stone 8. Wow. That's that's crazy, honestly. Sorry, we still have the cold playlist, but whatever. Let's up my great shield because I keep needing it. I used to do martial arts when I was much younger, Gum Gum, so I suppose the answer to your question is an automatic yes. He's still doing his little trance thing. Um, what else is I gonna do? Oh, right. Can't actually do that here. Yeah, I know, right? We're just slowly killing everyone in the round table, inch by inch. Uh, I did um, judo 
momentum. It was actually a lot of fun. I still remember some of the tenants, but I haven't practiced them in years. So I probably would suck at it since my leg literally works differently nowadays. I actually agree with that, Sonic Doctor. In fact, my niece has been looking into doing really basic karate in order to try and have fun with that. And I hope she has fun with it. I hope she enjoys that at some point. Now, I'm pretty sure we've been through here. Yep, this is what I thought it was. Okay, so this is this dungeon. So we've done that dungeon. That dungeon's done. That dungeon's done. That dungeon's done. Uh, we did that, and we did that. So there are only two dungeons we have not done. And I'm not sure we can reach them yet. They're, um... Well, one's right here. The other one is, like, here somewhere. Uh, if you mean the squid lady, yes, we did. If you mean someone else, then I have no idea what you're talking about. Uh, possible Rex? I've been trying really hard to not miss any loot, but I, I, I mean, there's probably loot I've missed. If there's another one I'm missing, it's not on the map. Which is possible, I'm just saying. It's not on my map. That's probably the one that's, like, over here. Cross back. There we go. Okay. Um. It's like, no. You know, it's funny you say that, Bregman. I literally know more females than males who have actually taken karate lessons. That's true even nowadays. Thank you, Eon Dragon. Oh, sorry, you asked a question earlier, Eon Dragon, and I, I answered you in my head. So you asked if we're doing all quests. Yes, but not really. We're doing uh, many quests. There are certain quests we're not doing, partially because of the ending we chose. Like, we're not doing the uh, the blind girl with the eyeballs quest any further, and uh, uh, we didn't do Dung Eater's quests because screw him, and that's my reasoning on that one. I think we've done everyone else's quests, though. I was say, if we need to get up there from over there, then we actually can't reach this stuff, I guess. Oh yeah, and then there's Gold Mask, who everyone keeps telling me about. I have no idea who this person is, or where to start that quest, hint, hint. Um, so whoever, or whatever Gold Mask is, we have not done that. And I believe... Cursing myself here, but I believe that's it as far as stuff we haven't done. Yeah, I think we actually can't reach either of these dungeons yet. So if only someone in chat could tell me where to go do this quest. Only. Um, hang on. Dean Bedeen says you can reach this one. Hang on. There's two right over here. Okay, stop everything I'm doing. I will immediately stop breathing. Bud. Um. Hey, which one's this one? Giant's Mountaintop Catacombs. Yep, that's what I thought. So the Hero's Grave is the one we can't reach right now. And is the last dungeon that I have on my list. The Giant Conquering Hero's Grave. Is that... Godfrey's... Grave? <sighs> anyway, something else I've been putting off I really need to do. And then we'll do this dungeon. The beast eye quivers. Which means something. I, I honestly don't remember what. It's something significant here, and that's all I remember about that. Those and that. Uh, and that. All this nonsense. Get out of my inventory. Get out of my inventory. I, I'm 
actually died earlier to having too much stuff in my inventory because I was trying to swap quickly and that didn't work out. I'm just gonna get rid of those. I'm never gonna use those. Oh, hey, I have a sleep torch. Nice. I'm gonna hold on to that. We've got a frost. I don't need a frost torch, but I do need a sleep torch. Whoops. There we go. Get rid of all of that. Uh, by the way, I actually like the Gelmir uh, outfit cosmetically. I'll show you what I mean. I'll, I'll leave it in my inventory here. Although I think I was mix and matching it a little bit. Let me get some lights so you can kind of see me a little bit. Oh, whoop. Well, this is my personal take on it, but... The actual suit looks like this. This is the Gelmir suit right here. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> oh, it burns. Um. Anyways, <clears throat> so like I said, I actually kind of prefer the other cheap BP, which is that one. I don't know. I, I, I like it. It's simple. I tend to like basic armor. It literally does look like I don't have a head, which is probably part of why I like it. You know, the whole animated suit of armor uh, kind of thing. But the stats are, like, I mean, just look at them. Look at the stats. So, yeah, we're going to go back to our actually defensive armor with lots and lots of poise. Raise my load for a friggin' reason. Ah. Okay, um, so, I need to go to A Altus Plateau, it's a broken bridge west of Leynol, uh, north end of the bridge, uh, hang on, hang on, hold on, hold on, I do, Crystal Ship, absolutely, so if you type into chat right now, exclamation mark next, it'll give you a link to my website, and I keep track of all this stuff on the website, and it'll show a list of what games we're playing and in which order. Hang on, I have to do Corhen at the Altus Highway. Where's the Altus Highway? Which of these many things is the Altus Highway? So, for example, the game we're playing next, I can tell you that right now, is Head On, which is a first-person shooter made... Uh, I think it just came out like a year ago. It's pretty recent. But it's done uh, with the, I forget what it's called, but the Doom Engine. So, or the Quake Engine, excuse me. So it's done in that style. Apparently that is the junction of the highway. Oh, well, sure, let's go here. Absolutely crystal ship. Like I said, I try to make my info as nice and easily sortable and easily parsable as possible. But there's only so much I can do, especially given how complex my overall system is. So I do, I do, if you have any questions, Crystal Ship, just, just ask. I'm here, I'm open. I'm not intimidating. Okay, I'm actually told I am intimidating, but... I haven't decided yet, Shadow Machine. I'm not going to push back head-on. It's definitely going to be part of the miscellaneous block. But... Um... I'm not sure elsewise, because there so one of the things that I do as well, this info for anybody doesn't know about this, is sometimes someone will say, hey, can you move this run so it comes live at this point? Because they are one of the main funders for that, and they really want to see it, and that's when they have time to see it. So I'm kind of trying to rejigger the, the schedule a little bit in order to accommodate that stuff. So like the Hollow Knight, Hades, and Outer Worlds right runs, as well as the Suikoden One run, all of those I need to put at a certain point in time so that those people can watch them. But the Stanley Parable, I'm not so sure about. Of course I could, Gum Gum. you kidding me? Alright, so head north. I blindly go north. I trust in K. He would never lie to me. Oh, have you played head-on, Plutonia? Interesting. I've played, like, 5% of head-on. I was just doing feasibility tests. Make sure it all ran and everything properly. I would say down. World spiraling down. 
I mean, if you look at it literally cosmetically, like this is up, and then we go down a little bit, and then we go down a little bit more, and hey, it looks like a finger. Um, I mean, if you think about it, Asgore is technically intimidating too until you get to know him. I passed him! Where was he? I'll kill him. Is it these two? Excuse me! Some sirs. Oh, God! Bridge. See the bridge. Uh, yes! Yes, I definitely do see a bridge. It's very bridgy. Around for anything that might look like a bridge. I found a camp. The fat guy. Okay, okay. It's definitely a bridge. Okay, back north. I'm, I'm told to go north again. Getting conflicting information. Instructions unclear. Hat on head. Um, alright. Just gonna go north. We're just, we're just going north. I'm told to go to the road. We're no longer going north. I see a person. Hello, person. Who are you? Look who we have here. How delightful to meet a familiar face, even after departing the round table hold. I've been doing some learning of my own since then, actually, and will happily pass it along to you. Sure. Let's buy everything we don't have. I'm yet to find the noble gold mask. I suppose he'll be closer to the Erd Tree. The path ahead might be perilous, but tread it I shall. Since departing the Round Table Hold, I've come to understand, in my solitude, how little it is I truly know. I'm yet to find, I suppose, the path ahead. Since departing, how little. May the Golden Order shine through you. Nope. Okay. Now let's get my mouse back. There we go. Now I'm supposed to keep going north. Oh, I really doubt it, Walker. Really doubt it. Going north. The the road is no longer going north. Request requesting update of information. Command directives have been interrupted by Eon Dragon. Should I, should I follow the road or go north? I mean there's a bridge up ahead. It's broken even. But I think Kay is lying to me about this, because there's no bridge here. If I keep going east, I'll eventually get to this bridge here. The maiden, nobody cares about them. Yeah, there's even a thing here. Ah, <sighs> Ian Dragon. Thank you. I do always appreciate that support. Let me go pull up the thing, just in case the donation says, I hate you and your stupid face. Uh, towards Bug Fables, you got it, Eon Dragon. Thank you very, 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 very much. I do always appreciate. Uh, give me a moment, let me jot that down. Done. Uh, so, should I not talk to this person? Question mark. Does talking to this person permanently lock me out of the game? Okay, okay. Oh, dear. Yeah, my, I, terribly sorry. Uh, are you here as a customer? Why, yes. Sell me everything. Book, book. Another tower shield. Cooler looking tower shield, even. Ho, ho, ho. I'm tempted by that, actually. Eh. I've got the money. In fact, I could even level up. I must apologize. I, 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 I'm afraid of very little to offer. Nah, it's cool. You're cool. Let's actually level. We can do it. We, we've got points. We can raise something by one point. Um... We can, uh, we can push strength. 
That'll, uh... There was a recipe book, yes. Let's see what else we got. Uh, we could keep pushing int to the true... Or dex to the true soft cap. We can push arcane. We've been kind of neglecting arcane. Um... I know what kinds of weapons that I have, okay. I could push mind. It's actually not about it, just get more FP. Uh, let's do that. Let's just dump 400,000 runes on that. Alright! Here's a waygate. You would think you could have a magic sword that stabs people. Um. Why don't we just put it right after head-on? Let's just do that. Hang on, I'm going to go update the website right now to put Stanley Parable right after head-on. It feels like that fits for me. It'll be a nice, you know... Or we could put it next. No, I didn't cheat. I was bored, but I didn't cheat. Um, as I've mentioned before, if I was cheating, I would have to go offline, like, permanently after that point. Which is one of the biggest reasons I really was trying to avoid cheating in this game. There it is. Sure, okay. There you go. <laughs> World record. Eight years! You know what? Yeah, let's do this. Let's do this. There. Commit. Done. Stanley Parable moved. Favorite boss in this game? No, Evo. Screw the beginner's guide. I spit on it. Do it, do it. You know, honestly, not a lot of bosses in this game have stuck out for me like ones in Bloodborne, for example, do. I, uh... I don't like the style of story that uh, Beginner's Guide was. I'm not into that in general, so... I would say either the Godskin Apostle or Renala. Those are probably my two favorite fights so far. Ancestor Spirit was pretty good, too. I'll give you that one. Give me a moment here. Thank you. Very much appreciate, as always, Lord Haramont. Much obliged. I will put that towards the Ratchet and Clank trilogy per request. Done. Yeah, it probably says something about me that my favorite boss fight is the one that everyone calls one of the easiest ones in the game. I just thought it was really well designed. Like, the phase one was was probably one of the best designed fights in the entire game, to be blunt. And the phase two fight was still interesting enough to be, you know, good. Absolutely. Sekiro bosses crush this game out- this game's bosses. Just completely. I don't even think that's a comparison. I literally think that some of the tutorial bosses in Sekiro are better than most of the bosses in this game. So when do I stop doing this, Kay? Yes, yeah, Sekiro plug. It's on sale. Really. It's actually faster to just warp back. 
Is he still here? Yep, okay. I should probably mention, anybody jumping into Sekiro for the first time, it is a fairly different game from your typical Souls format. Maybe that's why I liked it so much. But it has a much higher emphasis on mobility and parrying, as opposed to dodging and... Um, I don't know. The, the, the tempo of combat is completely different. It, it's hard to explain if you haven't seen it. Ah, you appear to be doing well. Very good. Well then, would you like to learn an incantation? Do... Do you sport with me? From your description, it can be no other than the Gold Mask himself. Of course, oh my glory. of course, I knew he would be close by. Bless the Golden Order and its benevolent rays. And to you too, my sincerest thanks. May the Golden Order shine through you. I mean, you're right, Lord Aramont. I am. I, do, I tend to not block when given a choice, unless I can attack with my shield. Wahaha. Back to. You also don't technically have to parry in Sekiro, with a couple of exceptions. There are other ways to progress through that game. Like I'm not, I'm not even sure you can parry some of the bosses, like the uh, <clears throat> gorilla. We meet yet again. Thanks to you, I have become acquainted with the noble Gold Mask himself and taken my place by his side, as you can see. Have no fear. I will still teach you incantations as before, though we must do so quietly, such that we not disturb the Great Master's cogitation. Oh, wow. I uh, That's news to me. I didn't know you could parry the, uh, the gorilla. That's, that's, that's actually funny. By the way, one of my favorite boss fights in Sekiro, and you can make fun of me for this, the three monkeys. The master is always deep in contemplation. While I frantically attempt to record his wisdom, the movement of his finger, and though I am yet to comprehend even the daintiest morsel of his wisdom, I know that this, this is my life's calling. The Golden Order has bestowed me, talentless as I am, the great duty of documentarian. <laughs> the Wu guy is actually in one of my highlight reels because I didn't know he was coming. I don't, I'm not going to spoil it. It's just I didn't know it was coming, so it caught me completely. So, um... May the Golden Order... Can I kill these two people now? <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about, Pastor Bubbles. There's clearly only three. There is one boss fight I actually don't like in that game. And it's the one that I ended up cheating on. Because I couldn't get past that boss fight. And K is going to be temp banned really quick. There we go. So what next? Or is this it? Okay, Colosseum. Where the hell is the Colosseum? So there's this concept called no mentioning, okay? And I'm speaking vaguely because there are people in chat, several people in chat, who not only have not played Sekiro, but are wanting to, or have just picked it up, 
So I'm trying to stay vague about certain things for a good reason. Uh, let's see. Depth. Rampart. Cathedral of the Forsaken. Roadside. Volcano. Chat Church. Rampart. Useless place. Uh, I think that was here. Or, or, or here. Sure, let's, let's go. Here instead. Well, it's like this, okay? Let's say that something really cool happens in a Godzilla film. And let's say you walk up to someone who has not seen that film and is looking forward to seeing that film and say, Oh man, there's this really cool thing! And then you tell them what it is, completely spoiling the moment. This is what we call no mentioning, which is distinct from no spoiling, because even though you are spoiling, you're not doing the traditional concept of spoiling. Sense me? Like, I know where that is. I've actually been up there. Shrug? Okay, I wasn't actually upset at Kay, but now I am. Do you not understand my point here? Do I, do I need to explain this better, or do you not agree with me? In which case, we're going to start having some words. Hey, Mr. Red. Just so you know, Mr. Red, I pushed the head on run back by, like, one day. FYI. Okay, that's... See, I know you, Kay, and you're a cool guy, and that's why I'm really confused by this whole sentence. It's like... But as I've been reminded yesterday, I don't always communicate properly, and that is on me. And I need to get better about that. That's why I asked if I need to clarify. Yeah, exactly, Mr. Red. Stanley Parable is super short. It finally came out. It, it's just going to be a one-and-done thing. And it'll be a nice uh, anti-Elden Ring game. To put that as absolutely bluntly as I possibly can. Yes, the Stanley up, up, uh, Parable update is finally out. I think. Hang on. I should probably 100% verify that. your rhythms. I must be the one to record them. What matters this issue of Radigan, really? The Erd Tree, heart of the Golden Order, lies before our very eyes. Why must these qualms come to you now? We were on the very cusp. Okay, yeah, Stanley Parable's update releases tomorrow. So... That's, uh, I think we'll be fine. Has this game bar bothered me? Yes. I I'd be nice and joking here, but Javan actually did the perfect explanation of what this game does to me. Uh, it just slowly eats at me. It just kind of slowly rots at me. And it just drags my entire mentality down. So, yeah, I'm, I'm going to need a breather after this, and I think Stanley Parable is perfect for that. Oh, was that you? Sorry, I hardly noticed. I'm a little shaken since the Master ceased his movements. The Master's reflections had heightened as we neared the Erd Tree. While still a precise calculus, the rhythms grew increasingly wild until he simply ceased. Now the Master is facing quite the puzzle. The Golden Order is founded on the principle that Marika is the one true god. However, the name of Marika's second husband, K, 
King Consort Radigan also appeared. Who exactly was Radigan? The Master is stumped. His finger has remained still ever since Radigan's name was discovered. Curse my mediocre mind. The Master only has me. And here I fail him. Who exactly was Radigan? The Master is stumped. His finger has... But the Erd Tree, heart of the Golden Order, lies before our very eyes. Why must these qualms come to you now? We were on the very cusp. As for what's eating at me, everything. The visuals, the audio, the music, the gross, the lore, the frustration, the irritation. Did you need something else? Just everything. Look at this person. Look at this person. Do you see this? Why is this some kind of rotting person? With their rib cage exposed, you know. Looks like they're emaciated. See? Just everything. Everything about this game eats at me. Um, the music's turned off so we can hear them talking because they don't know what audio balance is. Speaking of which, negative to audio balance. I actually forgot to add that one earlier, too. Uh... Uh, hang on, let's let's check our incantations. Are these okay, regression, 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 regression. Oh, there it is, law of regression. Yes, we have the law of regressions. Uh, I mean, I don't want to get down that lump, that chain again, Evo. I gave a plus for the visuals. I, I gave up. You win. You win. The game's very pretty. Uh, okay, I need Law of Regression equipped. Uh, okay, so hang on. Uh, do I have high enough int to cast it? Uh, let's find out. Go equip this sucker. I think we can turn some music on while we wait here, though. We can! We can actually cast it. Thoughts on Radigan. Uh, we'll get there. There. We can now cast. Okay. Uh, okay, so hang on. Rat uh, go back to the boss room. I really rather not, Arcus. If that's okay, I kind of hate the in-game music. So. Oh, wait, this is all right. This is the wrong boss room. This I was actually in the right spot. Honestly, probably not, Blade Jamal. This was always going to be a, uh, a walkthrough game. I mean, I've never beaten any Souls-like game. Well, that's not true. I've only beaten one Souls-like game. Two Souls-like games without a walkthrough. Jedi Fallen Order. And Sekiro. You'll notice those are two of my highest rated. Regression alone does not feel... Stop thing. Okay, so. Regression alone, yada, yada, yada. Oh, there's the statue of America. Or Radagon, excuse me. I did, okay? I never beat Sekiro legit. Okay, so. See, I'm not sure I ever will. We'll see. Anticipation of a thing. 
Oh my god. The statue swapped. Okay, now what? But yes, I never beat Genichiro. I honestly don't think I could beat Genichiro. So, that was kind of the wall for me. That's okay. Radagon is Merica. Oh, hey, they actually do give away the spoiler. So there you go, there's the big spoiler. Which I don't actually understand why it's a spoiler, but there you go. Back to Gold Mask. Uh... By the way, that's yet another reason for the spam problem. Have I already... One moment. Yeah, I was just thinking, how the hell are you supposed to know how to do anything I just did? <laughs> Literally, any of that. So, let me go ahead and, and now that we know that Radagon was Merica. Oh my god, spoilers. That is uh, the big spoiler. It's the one they held on to the longest. And the one that they kind of pushed towards the end and all that cool stuff. But the thing I don't understand is why it's a spoiler. Because as Plutoni just mentioned and as I myself have posited, it doesn't change anything. It doesn't mean anything. It doesn't matter. So, why is that a twist? Why is it treated like it's a twist? Even assuming you act... All, of course... It's only even a twist if you're delving into the lore. If you're not, if you're playing the game quote-unquote normally, then what you're getting is, okay, one character I've heard mentioned a few times is actually the deity. And? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it's like, who cares? Now, that being said, there is something I've been holding on to for a while, because as I mentioned, I have done a little bit of research on the lore of this game so I can actually talk about it a bit. And one of there are two... Uh, competing ideas here and there is as usual evidence for both because inconsistent storytelling or not sorry uh unreliable narration is the thing so either radagon was always america which has implications or radagon and america used to be different people and then remerged or rather merged not remerged merged into one person which has implications which one is true is completely in the air because there are actual bits of evidence for both. Clear bits of evidence for both in the game. So, make up your own mind on that one. I don't care enough to speculate because, again, I don't think it matters. What on earth did you do to the Master? Well, not that I'm complaining. Master's finger moves again, resuming his cogitation. More than good enough for me. I haven't the words to thank you. So I'd like to pass this on to you instead. A glimpse into the heart of the Golden Order. Documented by yours truly. Now we get Immutable Shield. Increase a left-hand shield's affinity and ailment resistance. To think that Radigan was Marika herself. Or at least, such is all I can interpret from the rhythm and calculus of his finger. How would such a thing even have been possible, I wonder? Sadly, I cannot comprehend it myself. Do you have a fuller understanding of the matter? Nope. Well, either way, I can continue my documentation. In truth, it matters very little whether I understand the Master's thoughts or not. I am merely his scribe. It is my sole and unwavering purpose. I'm so sorry. 
That is just so pathetic. Are we done? Also, I'm not going to, but could we kill these two people? Because <laughs> that would be really funny. Ah, uh, okay, I will not kill them. Just, yeah, the opening, so for those of you who missed it, um, I didn't understand what the hell I was seeing when I first saw it. But once the big twist was revealed to me, I was like, oh, okay. If you pay attention, uh, America is trying to break the ring and Radigan is trying to mend the ring in the opening cinematic. So that's cool. Still has nothing to do with anything, but, you know, that's cool. All right, so we were doing this dungeon. So that means we have two outstanding quests. We have Millicent's and we have those two Yahoos. Hey, Lolomlas. Oh, sorry, Raven King asked me something. Do I think the reason behind why this game... Uh, yes, is the short answer. Sorcerer's Selen. I don't know. But I do know... Sick of these things. Go away. You know, it's weird how often Donkey Kong keeps coming up, but, you know, it's just got some good music. What do you want from me? Oh, of course they would, Raven King. It's just... I personally have no interest in that type of story, because... If I don't know what's going on, and it's I'm just being told inconsistent lies from all the different people involved, then my overall reaction is, who cares? Now, I don't mean that to be negative. I get that some people get into it, including you yourself, obviously. But for me, it just destroys any investment or interest I have in the story. It's one of the reasons why, when I played both Dark Souls 2 and Dark Souls 3 on camera, I was deliberately ignoring the lore, because I just didn't care. And yeah, as, as Tequita points out, from an analytical perspective, which is kind of my job, there's nothing to analyze. I have nothing to talk about. So it's just, well... And I just shrug, because I have nothing to say about it. It's one of the reasons I'm not even doing a rumination on this game. It's like, I have nothing to say. There's nothing worth talking about, except on the gameplay axis. Maybe I should have jumped off there. Whatever. Well, there's the bows. And yeah, I'm actually with Dean Bedeen. I do like a degree of inconsistency. So let, let's talk about Dark Souls 2 specifically. I think it's 2. For, correct me if I'm wrong here. But 2 is the one that was really inconsistent, right? Like, it was so vague, it was stupid. Because, you know... I think it's two, because one of them was extraordinarily inconsistent and unreliable and just vague as all get out. And I think that was two. <laughs> well, yeah, I was going to compare and contrast it to three, which was, you know, a little bit more codified than two. I think, I think I'm getting the order of those games correctly there. Yes. I mean, I watched a couple of Vadi videos, too. He's very informative. He's a cool guy. But um, I, I, I can't really give the game credit for that, you know? You know, honestly, Plutonia, I don't have an answer to that question. I don't know the story of Dark Souls 2. Yeah, Vadi gets pluses. Absolutely. The game doesn't. Find me. You go explode over there. You just 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 do your explodey thing. I'm not here to judge. If you, if it's really in you to explode, you know, I I'm not I'm no king shaming, you know. Um so, Lord Harriman says, does unreliable narrative not bother you in Dragon Age? So, let's be honest with ourselves. Other, especially if we look just at Dragon Age Origins, the unreliable narration going on there doesn't 
not only doesn't really affect things, but most of those answers are given at some point in the story. We have a fairly strong idea of what's going on in Dragon Age. In fact, there's probably only two uh, outstanding things in all of Dragon Age lore that we don't know. So no, the inconsistent narrator doesn't bother me there because that's more there for flavor and initial stuff as opposed to, you know, we never know the truth because there's nothing but inconsistent narration. Okay, so this is a shortcut. Does that make sense? If that doesn't make sense, then I give up on life. <laughs> Which one was Absolution? I don't think I played that one, but I'm just curious. I am actually a little turned around here. No, okay, we're fine, we're fine. Get left, yep, okay. Well, if you remember, the Elder Scrolls series actually does piss me off a little bit with the uh, inconsistent, unreliable lore. It pissed me off so much, I made an entire meme of it when we were doing the lore run. As we got up to hundreds of clicks during the course of that lore run. So yes, it absolutely bothers me there. The difference is... That's gross. Um, the difference is in Elder Scrolls, let's be honest with ourselves, they're specifically doing it as a function of bad writing. Whereas here, at least, it is debatable whether it's bad writing. I suppose I should use the word lazy writing, but I do compose the two. No, I'm specifically saying that the writers of Elder Scrolls are lazy. And it's exactly what um, what Kira Whitenoise just mentioned. You don't have to explain anything because Kim. You don't have to explain anything, or Kime, excuse me. You don't have to explain anything because the dragon break and reality is mutable and everything is wrong and right at the same time. There's no need to maintain continuity or coherence. Just, huh. That being said, do I prefer Elder Scrolls storytelling or this game storytelling? Elder Scrolls, without question. And you're probably thinking, but Lore, hear me out for a second. How much of the in contradictions and who knows of Elder Scrolls really matters for the games in question? It changes the background, it changes the flavor, changes some of the world building, but when you play Oblivion, I'll use that as the perfect example there, you have stories and narrative and threads and characters and arcs and plot and so forth and so on, right? Yeah, there's there's no... Huh? When it comes to Oblivion. Yeah, you, all you really need is that main quest. And you get my point, right? Elder Scrolls, while its background lore is nonsense, and it is, let's just be clear about that, and they like to retcon it every single game or sometimes within a game, the actual stories of the quests and the plot and the main stuff and all that is fine. Thank you. Very, 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 very much appreciate Shadow Machine. Thank you. Much obliged. Um, did I allow Demon Slayer? Because I feel like I didn't. But let's double check here. Because that's an anime. And I know it's an anime. Let's go over to Stream of Nations. If it's on the list, then I was on crack that day. Why would I allow that? That's a, that's a long show, too, relatively speaking. Well, whatever. If I allowed it, I allowed it. That's my rule. Why did I allow that? What was I smoking that day? But I will put that towards Demon Slayer, for some reason. And Ruby Season 3 through 9. I was coming out of surgery. It makes sense. Someone decided, 
All right, he's still on all the drugs from his surgery. Uh, hey, Lord, you want to add Demon Slayer to the list? And I'm just sitting there going, oh, yeah, sure, whatever. Uh, anyways, <clears throat> so, um... Oh, we haven't killed these. Maybe that's what we have to do for us. Let's just get poisoned. I mean, if anybody wants to tell me how to get through this dungeon to speed this up, I am okay with that. I clearly am not aware of where to go now. So I'm just kind of blindly exploring and hoping to find something right now. down the side shaft. One second. Oh, I think I know what you mean. I think I know what you mean. That's... wow. This is, this is backtrack. Wrong way, wrong way. Uh, this way, maybe? This looks like an elevator. Ugly man, ugly man, does whatever an ugly can. Real quick, best 90s cartoon opening song. Go. That Tales is actually 80s, but I'll allow it. Actually know the Pokemon song, so I can't speak to that one. Ah, uh, we'll go ahead and call Power Rangers. That's a good song. TMNT is also an acceptable answer. I've never heard of Shaman King, so I got nothing on that. Yeah, I see it, by the way. Yeah, I, I know that, that I want to be the very best, but that's literally all I know about it. It's that one line. Uh, no, Shenny Saga. Not even close. Not even close. Someone actually asked that earlier, and which I once again say Portal 2. And Witcher 3. And a bunch of others. This is nowhere near. Go look up the pluses and minuses for FF14 sometime if you want to see the actual record. I know, it's an MMO. But still. Hang on, this can't be Narcia's theme if it doesn't have jazz in it. Digimon had a theme? Why are some of the pot people cool and the others are not? 
Teenage Mutant Hero Turtles? I don't even know what that is. I would also accept Rescue Rangers, by the way. I'm surprised nobody mentioned that one. Sometimes some crimes go slipping through the cracks. These two gumshoes are picking up the slack. No case too big or too small. When you need help, just call. Uh, yes, Plutonia. I assume you mean Millennia. Millennia, however the hell you pronounce her goddamn name. But yes, is the answer to your question. Speaking of the hardest boss in the game, it's not this one. This is some random repeat fight. See? Not even gonna change the boss music for this. That's why. And... Where's our last death route? That's all nine death routes. Hang on, Kira White Noise. Give me one sec. I want to do one other quest first. Nope, we feed them to someone else who eats them. Gummy bears! Sorry. Bouncing here and there and everywhere. High adventure that's beyond compare. We are the gummy bears. I have a death route. Uh, okay, so is there... I don't want to screw this up. But I could just give them all six right now. Should I? Like, I know... I, is that going to skip the fight or bug the fight? Or bug the thing. Okay, we'll just give them all. There you go. Have fun. Eat up, buddy. Let me pause the music so we can hear you talking. Strange. There's something else. But the death yet quenches. Bring more. There are no more. There are quite literally no more. I am not. Sated. Feed me more death. There's more. There, there's, there is no more. There are no more. I was gonna say, let's reset state. Give me my mouse back. There we go. Oh no, he's fighting me. I'm very surprised by this. Got some health though, Jesus. Okay, never mind. We're okay, we're okay. What's up, dude? We cool? Put it away. I won't forget again. My appetite. My sin. So please, enough. You're the one who asked me to feed you death root. Put it away, woman. So please. All right. Well, let's let's go reset the state again. Yeah, you gonna attack me again, buddy? Okay. Thanks for thy long labor, but I have done all I can in this land. Henceforth, mine appetite shall be my sole companion. Farewell. Hey, ancient smithing stone, and a claw, and a hammer, and a stone, and all sorts of stuff. 
Well, it's funny you asked that, Dakota. Because, uh... Anyways. <clears throat> that quest is done. Okay. So, now that he's done, let's go to Limgrave... Uh... With somewhere in Limgrave. Uh... Waypoint Ruins? Hang on. Waypoint Ruins. Waypoint Ruins. Do not... Okay, where is it? Tell me out here. Ah! Waypoint Ruins. Waypoint Ruins. Turn on music. Uh, sure of Unfalkenstein, although it is on the website now. You too can know the answer to your question. Wait, is it on the website? Maybe I never actually updated that. It was an extraordinary effort to get all that up to... Hang on. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Reviews. All the way to the bottom. Yeah, no, it is not updated. Which is funny, because it also is updated. So the final golden number was 437.35. Uh, the final playtime was 475.94 hours. Technically. I'm going to leave that up so I can remember to update it later. Get it back, because that's done. Alright, so... Let's get some Mega Man music in here. Very important. Uh, sure, Rex. I honestly do not mind. Because I would like to kind of max it out. Especially so we could then test the, the thing with Plutonia. But for now, let's do this quest. The last quest? Right? It's the last one. Are there any other quests I haven't done? I did all the dungeons except for one. Literally one. And it's one I can't even reach yet. I've done all the bosses that are on, it's like a separate boss list, except in the Frozen area. I haven't gone down that list yet. Damn it, Blade Trivol! No! No! I also technically have two outgoing quests right now. Ongoing, excuse me, ongoing quests. Uh, one of which is Gold Dude, and the other of which is um, Bobface. Um, uh, Millicent, Millicent. Who is neither a Bob nor a face. Po possibly Raven King. And what's funny is if you do kill him, you actually still get the Ancient Smithing Stone. I'm not sure if you get everything else, but you do get the Smithing Stone that way. God, don't even say that, Dakota. Yeah, I'm looking for the basement. I'm looking for the basement. I don't... I mean, that's a good song, and it sets the tone, but it's not only really short... It's barely a song, loader. That being said, that's a good intro. Batman the Animated Series, I mean. Yeah, exactly, Eon Dragon. It's, it's, it's doubly funny to me because several people asked me that today, and I'm like, uh... Oh... No, not by half. There it is. Oh. Alright, time for the hardest boss of the game. I'm ready. I'm ready. Where is my weapon? There we go. I'm ready. Oh no, it's the mad pumpkin head! And it's dead. Oh, okay. Tarnished, are we? No wonder you should turn up here. I am Salen, a sorcerer, quite plainly. Why are you here? Why is your mask so dumb looking? Ah, a yen for glinstone sorceries. Well, your aptitude does appear... passable. 
but one must choose one's masters wisely. I was exiled from the Academy of Rea Lucaria as a reviled apostate witch. Do you still wish to learn from me? Yeah, sure, why not? <laughs> well, you are a piece of work. Very well. You are now my protege in Glinstone sorcery. But I refuse to coddle or cast kind words. Never. Anticipate grievances, young apprentice. I could kill you so fast. Do you really have Glenstone Pebble? Oh, whatever. Well, well. Celevis is not a name I ever wanted to hear again. But fine. If it will help you, my apprentice, I offer my knowledge. The stars alter the fate of the Karian royal family and the fate of your mistress, Rani. But long ago, General Radan challenged the swirling constellations and in a crushing victory arrested their cycles. Now he is the force that repulses the stars. Really? Good to know. What's this sorcery, my apprentice? Ah. Then you have seen Master Azure. Master Azure was a founding Glimstone sorcerer, and my first teacher. A stern judge of men. But he must have seen something in you. You make us both proud. We can speak more later, my apprentice. If you recall, I was exiled from the Academy of Rea Lucaria. It was for attempting to restore the primeval current of Glinstone sorcery. The toothless pedantry peddled by the Carian royal family can rot for all I care. I want Glinstone sorceries that open our minds, unbound by terrestrial taboos. No matter what we give in return. My apprentice, I presume nothing. Teacher and student are not bound to tread the same path. But hear me out, my apprentice. I need your help to restore the primeval current of Glinstone sorcery. Perhaps this is a journey we could take together. I assume that's a yes. We're just continuing down this terrible, terrible path here. It's with my internet. Splendid. I thank you. This pleases me. It's been far too long since I found a fellow kindred spirit. You must have a fabulous teacher. Uh, I have a favorite. I feel like we were supposed to meet this lady a long time ago, and we've just kind of done all the other steps of her quest chain. I need your help, my apprentice. Master Lusat is another founding Glinstone sorcerer. And like Master Azure, he was banished from the Academy. Now he languishes in prison somewhere. My apprentice, can you find Master Lusat? With this glinstone key, you should be able to cross the boundary that encloses him. Okay. I need him to restore the primeval current of glinstone sorcery. He's nigh a child of the stars. Such is his body now. Okay. Um. After his expulsion from the Academy, I heard that Master Lusat returned to his home, a place called Celia in the Eastern Caled Wilds. Thinking about it, I obtained the Glimstone key I gave you from a Celian sorcerer. It wouldn't be too much of a leap to suppose he's still cooped up nearby. How do you breathe in that thing? Your appetite for learning is impressive. You make me proud. To have grown little legs so readily. You must have a fabulous teacher. How do you talk in that thing? Alright, uh, oh god, where was that? There, okay, there it is. Wait, no, that's, that's the crystal tunnel. That's the one, that's the one. Oh, it hurt. Ah, whatever. 
Let me do that. Hey, Lucina, Lucalino. Damn it. Stop giving me weapons that I don't want. Damn it. Note to self. Dump weapons again. Music! Okay, side place in cave. Shall find this side place. And with it, I shall unlock the keys to Karast. Hey, thanks, Neurosess. Thanks for the extremely under level night. Hey, thanks, Luco. Thanks. I first. Can I, like, say no? No, oh, okay. At least I have an infinite bank size. Technically, I have an infinite inventory size, too. I just don't want them clogging my inventory when I go to swap weapons, like just happened. Okay, do not drop down. Got it. Not dropping down. Instead, killing guy. Curious to some, just really quick here. Ah, there's no uh, power stance attack with shields. It's just b block and then also attack. Damn it! Oh, well. I mean, come on, I can make this work, but no. Um, get rid of that. Armor back on. My ugly, ugly, ugly armor. Okay, so there should be a glimmer visible in the distance. Sure. That's probably a thing somewhere. Snake sails. Sail snakes? Like on the way over. Is that it? That thing down there? Get away from the snail snake. Okay, so now I just gotta figure out how to get down there. Um, I was just thinking about jumping, but jumping into something I literally can't even see is probably not the best idea I've had today. I've had a lot of bad ideas today. Oh, hello. Your feet are screwed, sir. Spell, I guess. Uh, am I done here? Okay. Whatever. Let's go. Cool. We're cool. It works, I guess. I 
and cast it. Whoops. Uh, this is specifically Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze. Yes, so... Some of this crap. We don't need a want. Which is that and that. That. I was having to go get rid of that at this point. And that and that. Whoops! Which one I just dumped? The one I didn't mean to. song for that one, but I do remember that uh, that show a lot. Alright, you remember these? Remember these guys? You killed my horse once. I actually have very little Donkey Kong Country 1, 2, or 3 music on my, my various playlists. I mostly have Returns and Tropical Freeze. Yeah, that's... <laughs> it's a bit of a monohog. Uh, where was... Oh, I'm going the right way. I'm going the right way. Also, Captain Planet is a hero. He's going to take pollution down to zero. later I have a favor to ask okay. the form you see before you is merely a projection so that's how you breathe my body lies elsewhere but the Academy shackles prevent it being moved my body is on the weeping peninsula at the southern tip of the lands between imprisoned in the ruins just down from the church of Marika past the plain of the wandering mausoleum can you make the journey to my body I have something that I can only trust with you. Uh, sure. My body is on the Weeping Peninsula at the southern tip of the lands between. Imprisoned in the ruins just down from- Can you make the journey to- I have something. I, I was actually blown away by the fact that the quest gave directions. I should probably actually pay attention to those, but first I have to say thank you. Thank you. Much appreciate, Sean. As always. I'll put that towards Shantae and also Shantae, if you need a moment here. Oh! Was my back. I don't know if you heard that. Okay. So, hang on. So. Indeed. My body is on the weeping, weeping peninsula, peninsula, southern to imprisoned in the ruins just down just from the Church of America. Past the can you make I have some Okay, I think I know where that is. But first, just so Nero's house doesn't go completely crazy. 
Back to music. So there's several churches of Marika down here. Let's see what we got. We've got. Well, there's two. Two churches down here. Uh, I'm sorry, Wenlock. I didn't even see it. I apologize. There it is right there. Although you didn't put it towards something. And that's why I didn't see it. I was pure evil. Wait. Thank you, Wenlock. Whoop, whoop, hang on. Thank you. I will put that towards Star Trek Online. Did, did someone just kill Question Man? Yep. Ah. Google just killed Question Man. Hang on, let's fix that. There we go. Okay, so. Doesn't it bother me when in TS you go to the Mage's Guild after you've maxed out everything and they treat you like a footpad? Not really. I mean, it bothers me a little bit, but the practic the practicality of the situation means there's not a lot they can really do about that. Now, they could do one thing about that, but that gets into... that basically gets in the way of storytelling. So let's assume for a moment... Let, let, me, just, let me just give you the super summary of this, rather than go down the list. The more malleability a story has, the less story a story has. If you have to acknowledge, for example, um, that the main character can be any class, any race, and any spec, then you have severely hampered your ability to tell a story with that character. Even though you can presume certain things about their personality, you can't presume anything else. We were seeing this a lot during Final Fantasy XIV, so I'll give you a practical example of that. Now, you might think, what the hell does that have to do with you know acknowledging that you're actually worth a damn? Well, the point is they could add another trigger, another script somewhere that says, hey, you have this many spells or this many stats or this level of advancement in this thing, right? And therefore, what the goddamn hell is that thing? Uh, and therefore, you know, change dialogue or change acknowledgement. But y you see how simply acknowledging that means you are now limited in the kinds of stories you could tell, because you have to have a main plot thread that progresses forwards regardless of the status of your character. So, why is your super high-level Mega Mage doing this quest chain at all? In lore. Stuff like that, right? Now, I'm probably explaining that incredibly badly, but that's why, even though that does bother me, it's something I just kind of accept. And kill the music. We didn't even get one song in. My apprentice. Thank you for coming. These shackles take a toll on us all. There is something I need you to look after. My primal glinstone. A star has fallen and my fortunes waver. Someone may come for my life. And so... I entrust it with you. Myself. You what? Uh, okay. Sure. I'm not gonna read too much into that. Okay. I think we literally just ripped out her phylactery, yes. I'm not sure how we did that, or knew how to do that. Thank you, my apprentice. This is my essence. Please, treat it with care. Can we just free you? Is that a thing we can do? Like, can we just... Treat it what you hold. Is my very being. Okay. Uh, 
I think so, Kira White Noise. Like, we got to the point where the festival stopped over here, if that's what you mean. What is welfareism, Gum Gum? In response to Terra's question, what I would do for rating the co-op system at StarCraft II is I'd rate it in the same way as everything. So each commander is a different playstyle, and therefore would qualify for different consideration, like you just mentioned, for example. Um, the interface of doing it, the maps for doing co-op, uh, the functionality of, like, how much the game supports and encourages the co-op system itself. You know, the fact that we can see, that we can see certain aspects of each other's things and the way that we can co coordinate and stuff like that. All that kind of thing would go into how we review co-op. But yes, each commander would also be specifically in consideration? Question mark? Question mark. I have Lowly Struggler. I even killed it. Uh, well, okay. Yeah, we didn't we didn't do all this because we just did red main or red, whatever thing. We're gone. Of course, it's a misty gun. What else would it be? No way. And there's a crucible knight because of course there's a cru okay. We're if you're gonna be that much of a dick, we're gonna pull out my friend too. And a new waypoint. There you go. Uh, so, anyways, <laughs> yeah, that's done. So let's, uh, let's let's get on with it, as they say. Hello, anyone here? Hello. Um, I, I I think I know the direction you're you're thinking, Terra, and I tend to agree. There are several co-op commanders which are just really well designed, like Rainer. Eh, you know. But some of them, oof. I mean, Tychus, you know. Okay, so he does. Hang on, let me double check this. Yeah, double crucible is so okay. Someone earlier asked the hardest gate fight I'd done. Um, the hardest bullcrap fight is the pulp, is the the ball bearing seeker dude who's an asshole who two shots you. The hardest legitimate fight I fought was probably the two crucible knights. Uh, we did actually, I did actually summon one person that was cat horse for that fight. I thank you again, cat horse, for that assistance. But that was a mean fight. <laughs> Probably the most properly, legitimately difficult fight I've done so far. Anyways, yeah, I don't see him here, so I'm gonna assume that he's moved. So, um, in Selen's prison, the physical prison? Or the other prison? We've got two prisons going on here. So prison's all, all the way down. Um, so, does the Empire have a system in which things have value? Yes. I, I still don't understand what welfareism as you describe, so I'm gonna go with no, just because I don't know what you're asking exactly. Didn't I just... Oh, wait. Notice the enemies, the doll, marionette enemies, being used to imprison her. A fume knight? What the heck is the fume knight? They have?
Dark Souls 2 boss. I think we did all the bosses of Dark Souls 2. Oh no, she's dead. Ah, well meant. I hardly expected to see the champion of the festival here, of all places. See ya, Evo. No, Selen. Did you? Oh, I knew her. Whatever the case, she's, she's right here. Now, just put it behind you. She was known as the Graven Witch. Obsessed by the primeval current, countless sorcerers fell to her hand. The most dangerous mage in the entire history of Rhea Lacaria's academy. Okay. It is strange, though. The woman, she was like a husk. Her soul already fled. I suspect Selen lives on elsewhere. I like to read. I'm sure she'll turn up eventually. In another body. A sickening thought. But one that won't stop gnawing at me. I suspect Selen lives on. I'm sure she a sick. Okay, so now. Uh let's see here. The King's Realm ruins? Well, I haven't so much as looked at it, Let Latariox. I always screw up your name. I'm sorry about that. Um, but I'm looking forward to it when it comes out. I liked Divinity Original Sin 2 a lot. So, you know, no. There we go. Uh, no, the Empire does not have a, what we would nowadays consider a stock market, Plutonia. Apparently it's outside, on the plateau. I loved DOS 2. It had its issues, but... Honestly, the positives just swamped the negatives in that game. Great game. It, uh, I don't know, Roman Cure. I am not aware. I do know watching increases it, and you can click it occasionally to make it go up, but... Uh... The housing market can go right to hell. Speaking as a former homeless person and a current non-homeowner. As I say, if you're talking about the ones that were uh, over here, I want to say? The ones that Kay lied to me about. Oh, he's out here, I can't make it. finding this thing in here. Here you go, evil witch. Just for Terra. What, no Hi. shoving the stone in? Just how long has it been? Like three minutes. Thank you. You've helped me fill a new body once again. And it's truly a gem. Young and full of vigor, a snug fit for my primal glimstone. Better still, I've shed those awful shackles. Finally, I can return to the Academy to expel the Karian royal family and restore the primeval current, my dear apprentice. I owe this all to you. You're welcome. Finally, I can to expel. Are, are we done or, huh? Hi, Kay. Uh, let me answer your question indirectly because the way you're phrasing your question is still like twisting my brain in a knot. If you are an older person who is no longer capable of working, will you be financially taken care of? Yes. If you are disabled or otherwise physically incapable of working, will you still be financially taken care of? Yes. Uh, okay, so Ranala, 
Who's with y'all? Do we have to pick the one to help sell him? Alright, so hang on. We got, uh... It's her. Are we about to lose the ability to respec? I mean, that's whatever. At this point, I don't even think I'm going to respec. Okay, so we can... Uh, so we want the red one, I assume. We're going to kill people because we're evil. I mean, we're white. We're killing all these people anyways, so it's it's kind of whatever. Is it? Oh, hang on. Let's let's see. Who are you? Be summoned by Sorceress Selen, or challenge Sorceress Selen. Okay, okay. So we are assisting. Okay, so we assist. We're here to help you kill everybody, because that's our goal anyways. Jeren, bringer of my death. You have no gratitude. For free. I will just absolutely body this guy. Join the Goodbye. We got his armor. Not that we will ever use it, but you know. Just fill the coffers. Ah, my apprentice. You've saved my skin once you again. You don't stop calling me that, I'm gonna kill you next. The Queen of Caria is no more. With the body of Master Azure returned, the Academy can restore the primeval current. So that we, fallen children of the stars, might beam with brilliance once again. My apprentice, will you stay with us here at the Academy? Oh, I know it's not possible. You have your own calling to be the next Elden Lord. But do think of me, of your teacher. On the eve of your crowning, you will always be my darling pupil. Rest assured that I know the entire Academy will swear allegiance to the new monarch, my apprentice, become Elden Lord. Well, um... Hmm. Perhaps I'm jumping ahead, but here is a symbol of my allegiance and the Academy's. Do you recall what once I told you? That glimstone is the amber of the cosmos, and sorcery is the study of the stars and the life therein. When you become Elden Lord, please illuminate me. Lay bare the secrets of life which course the Elden Ring. Next time, I will be your student. Oh, one last thing. If you fail to claim your throne, you can always pay me a visit. Oh, don't fret. Even my dullest pupils will always have a place here. Thanks. I don't know, anybody who organizes their books like this is not someone I want to hang out around. So, um, <clears throat> Luz, uh, Lucalino asks, will I be playing Dragon Quest XII, assuming it ever comes out? Uh, that's, as always, up to you all. I don't decide what games I play. And since I don't really have time for playing games on camera, uh, other than co-op stuff, that's up to you guys, not me. That's a dagger! Get out of here. What's that? That's garbage. Get out of here. Get out of here. Alright, so I rested, and then returned to... Sell it. Okay, she's right here. Hey! What is it, my apprentice? Uh... I mean, this is one of the, mo the best quests in terms of gameplay design. In the game, make of that what you will. It warms my heart that you still think of me. Yet I still yearn for you to find Master Lusat. His body is needed at the Academy to hone the primeval current. Who could have guessed? What a place to find Master Lusat. Oh, oh 
This is wonderful news. Apparently I already found him. Now his body Where was he? And when the bodies of Masters Azure and Lusat are together, the Academy can hone the primeval current. So that we, fallen children of the stars, will beam once again. I am most grateful. There are no others who would have done this. What a joy to have you as an apprentice. And kindred spirit. This is a mere token of my thanks. Please, take it. Oh, that was Lusat. God, I... Whatever. It's okay, we found Lusat. Oh, hey! She's, uh, she's gone. Thou, art thou now assured of thy Be not, I would but. Done here? <laughs> Have we absorbed enough horribleness for today? Yeah, she, uh. That's, that's her now. That's her. Them? It? Man, I don't know at this point. Yep! That's that. Moving on. I was actually just thinking if I could, you know, kill uh, kill her, but... Eh. Cool. Alright, so that's Selen's quest started and concluded. Um... Yeah, uh, let's see. Uh, oh, I can unmark that, because we did that. So there's one quest... So there's one dungeon we can't do. Oh, right, 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 right. So let's go get some things. So, I'm told there's some smithing stones in here that I missed. Yeah, the ending is like, hey! Oh, yeah, by the way, I'm a monster now. Yeah, that's that's cool. That's cool, everything's cool. Yep, and now you're a squid, you're a kid, you're a squid, you're a kid. Well, it's simple giga pudding. Any questions? Could the Empire help? Oh yeah, we, we could pull our soul out of that nonsense. I suppose I should be on my shield for this. Yes, thank you for reminding me, Rex. Finally at a point where we're not listening to people talk. I see him. Oh, these are stupid. I even leveled this stupid thing, too. You have too much health to kill with a shield. All right, all right. There's an eight. How many of these things do I need? They're weak to striking damage, which, as it happens, my shield does. Uh, I suppose I could check. I really don't like that the the smithing stone at this level isn't yellow like it was before, which is nice and obvious. It's white on blue. It's hard to see. Yeah, but don't the scale of strength, okay? Which I have very low of, because I haven't leveled my strength, like, at all. I suppose it could be worse. We do 
of a flail. Hang on. There is a actual level cap. It's 700 something. It's when you have maxed out every stat. Seven hundred thirteen. Thank you. Yeah, there's also a soft cap. I actually did a little research on the soft caps. It's actually a gradient. There's like an initial soft cap, and then a second, a third, and a fourth. And at a certain point, you're only getting one stat up per stat, rather than like several. I'm actually already at the soft cap for several things. that personally, Rex, but I didn't look into strength, admittedly. I was primarily looking at dex and int. That's, you know, that's actually a good question, Dakota, and truth be told, I don't know. Precious few RPGs I have played implement the concept of a soft cap, like FF9 did, and I didn't like that in FF9, so I, god damn it. It's fine, Giga, but it's fine. It's fine. Everything's fine. Everything is fine. Okay, so. Flail. I don't agree with that sentence, Dr. Winter. Quite the contrary. I actually think that soft caps encourage you to min-max. Lord knows I've been doing it, but, yeah. Um, probably coincidence, play too all, but who knows. Okay, so flail, 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 flail. Flail? Looks like that's my best flail. I don't know what else I got. I also got hammers. Oh, those are big, though. Hmm. Unfortunately, I think I only have the one flail. But I do have a flail. So. Oi! I see what you mean. God, I'm stupid. Hang on. Listen, my stupidity knows no bounds, alright? You gotta understand. We're still in the cold playlist, because we're still technically in the cold area, story was. Oh yeah, someone asked what the last story boss we killed us. Uh, that would be Margot, I believe. Hang on, which, what was the Knight Rider one? This is a Japanese game, yes. Oh, I see what you mean. Whoop, let's lose our mouse. Oh, jeez. There we go. Okay. Well, I took you from that match. Lay out your arm. Alright. Then I missed something, okay. Uh, yeah, I would need eight, six more smithing stone eights to progress the katana. Yes, but I, I just, I don't agree with you, Dr. Winter, because when your skills only matter at a certain point, 
you're incentivized to be very careful and precise about what you put into things, and thus you want to squeeze as much usefulness out of them as you can, which is min-maxing. Yeah, let's hit the Forlorn really quick. Forlorn. Uh, this is the wrong zone. I'm gonna go up here. It's interesting since this is actually one of my remixes, Savicom, so I'll take that as a compliment. Uh Okay. So I'm going outside. Yeah, was, uh, yeah, we're probably just thinking in different directions. Start to enter. Because it sounds like we agree, just in different directions. I'll never do it, Savicom. Never! Remind me. Oh, wow, that just instant. I got two viscerals in that fight. I just didn't use the second one. Alright, so crab. Crab. Come here, crab. And there's a statue? Ah! Aha! All things make sense. Why can't I break this? Whatever. You, come here. Come here, I'll kill you. I'll kill you. I'll kill you. Oh god, run. Run, he's gonna kill me. No. You killed me. Okay, so that's three, so I need one more. Please, please stop chasing me. Okay, fine. Are you weak to strike damage? Well, that's interesting. So back down here. So if I could get one more just in the world, in the loot. In the, in the dungeon. I have. Actually, I think I do have the Silver Scarab. Right there. You notice I took off the golden scarab forever ago. <laughs> I never figured out how to open that stupid door. Whatever. Do I need three more? I thought I needed one more. Didn't I just get three? I guess we'll find out in a minute. Is it happiness and joy, Dean Bedeen? I don't know, Rex. If, if you are correct, then you are correct, and I do in fact need uh, seven at that point. It's just become a farm stream. We're just gonna be here all day. I'm joking. I'm not doing that. Or I'm gonna have to do off camera. Watch something, we'll put it off camera. Well, there's a smithing stone six, not the one I need. That's cool. Hi, Colgrim. I'm mostly looking for any ones on the walls that I did loot last time. 
was in a bit of a hurry last time I went through here because this place sucked. Yeah, last time we had Shield Bash and this was a little bit of a slog, and it's like, you know. So we probably missed some. There's apparently stones down below. I don't think I agree with Dean. I think Dean's lying to me. God, those are hard to see. There's one. Hang on. Uh... Let's get three out of the way so we can see a little bit of it. It's actually not a bad idea, Rex. Two. Oh, it makes perfect sense, Gumbo. Although, you're officially heading territory I'm not really allowed to talk about on my show. It's not October. Keep getting these rune arcs. I don't even remember what those are for. Ancient stone. It's two ancient stones I got now. No, stop, stop! God damn, freaking buffering. Go. Uh, okay. We don't have time to kill you. So we're gonna go in here, grab that, and that, and then we're gonna leave. Ah, that's right, that's how we activate great runes. Which we have never done! And never will. Okay, so yes, let's get out of here. Have some Zelda music playing, very important. Is there a boss the other way? Because that would be relevant. If there is, we'll go back in there. Yeah. Well, god damn it. Alright, hang on. I'll figure out how to get back down there in a minute. Give me a minute. Give me a minute. We're just gonna have to live with this for a second. Okay. I don't have to deal with that anymore. That's done. And this. We can get this. Get some Metroid music in here. I do love repeat bosses. Like, a lot. Well, lots of need my man to lay out your own. Please upgrade. And... done. We now have, finally, a plus 10 and a plus 25 weapon. Uh, yeah, we just... I didn't see a door down there because I wasn't looking for one, so that's probably what happened. So if that's all that is, then yeah, we've done that. If, if we don't need the door. In that case, we're done in there. Uh, 
I think it's actually everything. I think we're ready to progress finally. So we're gonna do this finally. And then we'll do the other thing. Whatever it is. But I want this freaking map thing first. I'm tired of my map being this weird thing. Alright, this is a good time while we run here. Let's look at questions. Alright, so we got a question. We got a question. Cashel asked... Do, oh yeah, I need to take the girl to the church. Uh, Cashel asked, do you think it's possible for a game to have too much balance? Uh, actually, yes. So, one of the things that idiots tend to throw as an insult towards games is that a game is too homogenized. Um, now, the thing is, there is such a thing as a game being too homogenized. There is such a thing as all the classes being too the same. The reason I say idiots tend to throw that insult out is because they use it when it doesn't apply. You know, every, every class plays the same, and WoW is a good example of that. And that's extremely not true. But it is a real risk. It is something that can happen. If you balance everything essentially perfectly, what you have is chess, where the two sides play exactly the same, and what's the frickety point at that point, you know what I mean? So, there is such a thing as too much balance, and it is detrimental, and where the hell is that? And yeah, actually, honestly, Ghost Recon Wildlands has too much balance, too, I agree with that. We used the guns we used because they were cool. Not because they were better or worse, or it was worthwhile, it was just, you know, T-Rex dogs. That's all it was. Yeah, hang on, we're gonna go to the church in a second, don't worry, we are, I just, I want this stupid map thing, I'm tired of it being there. Um... Has there ever been a game where a merchant became a villain? Uh, yeah, like, lots. I'm not sure if there's one where a merchant has become the main villain. I'd have to think about that. But yeah, having merchants be, you know, chapter villains or regional villains or whatever is semi-common in a lot of games. Hell, that's, that's in KOTOR 1, for God's sakes. I gear! This isn't terrifying. God, I wouldn't want to walk across this at normal speed. Correct, the Gestalian um, Empire was founded off of the Gestalian Merchant uh, Mercantile Empire. It started he's his father was a very wealthy merchant, and he got things going, and then Gestal took over and turned it into a full military empire. Hey, we have a map. Woo, map. Okay, church. Choich. Choich? Choich. To choice. Oh, sorry, Rex. Oh, excuse me. It's a decent map. I give it positives. It's a good map. It is occasionally not a good map, but that's kind of a zone specific thing. Um, twitch, twitch, twitch. Uh, I, um, physics. Um, Loke says, I think there should be a lot of politics and back and forth between the Horde and Alliance leaders as the flight leaders. What do you think, Laura? Are you kidding me with this? Yes.
really dislike how you can't move after swinging. If you bounce off of something. Those these things. You're just kind of stun locked for a second after you swing. Move. Are we done? Is that enough? That was not enough. Okay. Yeah, I don't even want to know what the poise of this thing is. I've seen some enemies do it with uh, shields too. Really big uh, power shields or whatever. Personally, I've never seen any enemy bounce off of my poise. All I have is like 100. Oh my gosh, 33 poise. Stop shooting at me! Anyways, I think that'd be awesome, Look, I think we should have more politics in general in Warcraft. Or perhaps more accurately, I think we should acknowledge politics more in Warcraft. Because there are politics there, they just tend to not acknowledge it, so... You know. Uh... Who am I sending here? Of course I missed the message in the middle. It's a message in this game. Precious item required ahead. Yeah, that's that's not useful. Maybe this one? Nope. Still no. Which of these messages is the one I actually give a damn about? Oh, there it is. It's this one. Oh, young yet towering sister of ours. Let the birthing droplet in, and create life, for us, for all the Albanorix. Thank you, I finally fulfilled my purpose. That's... Our young yet towering sister will give us hope. Now that nothing is left unfinished, I will join you in battle to the bitter end. And when the fighting is done, then you may lay me to rest. Beside Lobo, my dear wolf. Sure, I, I, I can do that. Um, I have no idea how or why she had a, a dragon smithing stone on her. But, you know... And does that reset the mausoleum? No, okay, mausoleum's still down. Yep, yeah, we just keep impregnating corpses in this game. It's just a thing. We need to reach out to the uh, From Software narrative team and be like, listen, do you just have a thing for impregnating corpses? We're not here to judge, really. We, we're just curious. Oh, so we're just impregnating sleeping people. That's much better. <laughs> God. Anyways, we're, we're moving on. Okay, so, um, yeah, thank goodness they were just asleep. Ugh. <laughs> oh. I'm just yeah, we're we're done. We're done. I'm out. Just no.
Okay, so anyways, I gotta say, ginseng tea so far has worked out really well for me. Of the various types I've tried. I've noticed I tend to not like fruit flavored, but I tend to like uh, herby, flowery, and ginseng. Go figure. Alright, so. Uh, here. Let's see what is here, shall we? So never actually explore this place. Excuse me, are you an enemy? It's like, oh, okay. That's good to know. I like not killing things. It's a refreshing change of pace, you know what I mean? There's some ice walls, plural. It's always fun. Killing is so beautiful. It'll be such a beautiful death. Wait, sorry, wrong game, wrong game. Peaceful music, very appropriate for this very peaceful, wonderful, wonderful place. This is, this has, I have nothing but positive vibes about this horrific place we're going through. Invigorating meat. Okay, so there's a seal, which I have not unsealed. Yeah, snow and blood, you know, it's it's like uh it's contrast, you know. It's um Sure. Double sure. This just this is just the best idea, really. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. Okay, okay, that's cool. I'm cool. <sighs> Let's see. Questions, questions. Um, have you ever played a game that you got to love a unique weapon? Uh, actually, yeah, there's several. I will admit, as cliched as it is, I've always loved a game that lets me use a scythe to good extent. There are very few games that I've played that really do that. Uh, Dungeons and Dragons... That is to say, Neverwinter Nights 2, specifically. Allowed me to use a scythe bill, and it took some work, but it was doable. And of course, there's the Reaper class over in uh, the 14. I did actually get it. I liked it. Um, I tend to like weird weapons too, which I know is a bit of an anime thing, which is funny since I tend to not like the enemies which use weird weapons. But there's one fighting game, and hell if I can remember what the name of it is, where there's a character who literally wields an anchor. And I love that. Uh, there's also, so, Sengoku Basara 3, which is a Dynasty Warrior style game, which is honestly the best Dynasty Warrior style game that I've played personally, has uh, several very unusual characters, including someone who uh, has a grapple attack. That's always cool. Visible with a grapple. That's not unfair at all. Wow. Uh, but there's several of them. Oh, that's even better. I explained a lot of things that are going on here. Nope. Didn't heal. Didn't have time to heal. Um, in Sengoku Basara 3, there's a lot of unusual weapons that some of the characters have, and they're just a lot of fun. But I, I look forward to reviewing that game someday, just so I can play it again. Like, just purely selfish reasoning there. One moment.
So, let's see if we have this sentry's torch thing. We do not have a sentry's torch. That was the theme of Terra from Final Fantasy IX. Yeah, I think I'm just going to sprint to the torches. I, I feel like that's a better use of my time here. Anyways, uh, God, I don't remember what all they used. There was one woman who uses, like, every revolver on her. And she has several. Uh, there's this one dude who uses his ball bearing. Like, he's he's chained up in, uh, in like, a prison shackles. And he uses that as his weapon. There's this one dude who uses, uh, I, it's actually got a proper term, I forget what it's called, but it's a circle blade. Or, okay, or I could just run through and find these torches. I do like running through and not fighting things. Just need to figure out where the torches are. So before we do this, let me just do something real quick here. Sorry, just give me a second. Oh yeah, Date and his six sword, that's another fun one. I have not played Blaze Blue, sorry. I have no knowledge of such things, for I am terrible. song for this. Okay. No, we're not even close to talking about Guilty Gear. I've never played Guilty Gear, if you remember. I don't know who those people are, Gum Gum. So that's my answer to you. Oh. Gotta say it right, too. Woo. Torches, 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 torches. you know, that's acceptable. Ugh. 
Well, they definitely both exist, Gum Gum, I can say that. I do think the Revenge of the Sith uh, novelization did some good stuff with the book, as I talked about during my rumination on the movie. But I don't know anything else about the author's style, and I've never actually read the Darth Plagueis book, so can't speak to that. Yeah, this is um, a thing. I gotta be completely honest, if I wasn't told the sentry torch would work here, I wouldn't know what to do with that, and I'm still trying to find these torches to begin with. I'm supposed to be lighting. I'm not seeing anything even indicating a torch. Except maybe this? Hey, there's a flame. Found one! Find me. Let's assume it's up, because it certainly wasn't down. There we go. Roof get. Where is it, Amadeus, if you don't mind my asking? What I call Mace Window as a character. Um, that's an interesting question. I like the examination of the concept of someone who uses the dark side for good. It's in very controlled aspects, even though that's actually con contrary to how Star Wars. And the AU has portrayed the dark side, but other than that... I don't know, he's cool. I like him. I think he's a little overblown, to be completely honest, but that's usual for any popular character in any fiction, so that's neither here nor there, really. I wish they'd allowed him to do some more stuff in the movies, because most of his badassery comes from the books, but that's true for an enormous quantity of Star Wars characters, so that's not exactly unique to him. Definitely not outside right now. Let's see. Questions, questions, questions. Um... Twitter question, which I answered. There's the principles of comedy question, which we spent like 20 minutes talking about. Let's see. Uh, what do I think of Steven Seagal as a person? Well, I don't know anything about him whatsoever, so that's my answer to you. Yes, G A O L is pronounced jail and means jail. Uh, this is something from Mario Galaxy. I forget which one. Please forgive me if I'm dead. Never mind. I guess I'll go look it up. This is Mario Galaxy 2 specifically, one of the overworld map songs. Back to questions. Uh, let's see here. Um. <laughs> How would the Empire do something like Kyria? I don't even begin to understand that question, Gungum. How would the Empire do something like Kyria? Like, okay, you know, you gotta have date in a movie first. Maybe dinner? Something?
Yeah, I'll be honest, I didn't know how to pronounce jail for a while until I forget which game. It was one of these type of games where I was like, oh, hey, yeah, it just means jail. And I was like, oh. How would they deal with them? Uh, they would definitely be a target for the Bastion to try and... I, I have no nice way of saying this. Correct the society to make it less horrifically evil. Uh, feeling that, they would just be an enemy at that point and would be crushed like a bug. Um, let's see, next question. Um, aw. Evo had a question, which I missed. Well, no, see, my point, uh, Gum Gum, is you have consistently portrayed Kyria as the Brotherhood of Nod, to use an, ex an, an equivalence, right? You don't worry about the Brotherhood of Nod being the good guys or, you know, caring about other people wanting to destroy them because they're the Brotherhood of Nod. Looks like this is where I want to go next. Yep, that's the last one up there. Mm. Uh, second to last one. I don't know where the last one is, then. That's the only one I have a hint for right now. Let's see. Uh, so let's save Evo's question for when she comes back. Uh, hello? What the hell? Hang on. There we go. Oh, someone just asked a question. That's why it's like... It won't let me edit the question queue. That's because the question queue is just being edited. It doesn't like me editing it while it's being edited. Um, so there's actually a lore explanation for that, Kay, if you want to hear it. It boils down to the fact that the Brother of Nod jumped on Tiberium production the moment it became available, and used that to absolutely bankroll a ridiculous amount of military exp expansion, and of course, you know, the Brother of Nod in lore has existed for some time, at least since World War II. So They already had a bit of a personnel base, and Kane himself is a little charismatic. Win it! Win it! Win it! So, uh, that's, that's the answer to your question. And Tiberium is extraordinarily useful and valuable and essentially became a perfect mineral for some various reasons, so that's where that came from. Uh, yes, loner, but... Red Alert and CNC branched out from each other almost immediately. The only Red Alert that has anything to do with the rest of Command & Conquer is Red Alert 1. Got it. So there's one more somewhere. Oh, he's shooting me now. Yeah, sorry. Um, the Galactic Empire might be another example, Gum Gum. Like, that's what you're describing to me. You're describing the Galactic Empire, and that's fine. But I just want to preface that that's... You know, I, I'm not saying that your writing is bad when I say that you're describing a horrifically evil organization. It's just you're describing the bad guys. You lived? I don't know where the other one is. I had an idea where to get to that one, and that's all I had. Ah, stretch. Ugh. Um, I don't understand your question, Loke. The force is genetic. See that guy? That guy had the force. this thing. I am not doing small amounts of damage here. Like, okay. 
only people in lore who have uh, someone in their family who have access to the Force have the Force. That's uh, been showcased several times. And of course, there's the whole it's literally in your blood thing, midichlorians, etc., etc. Now, that being said, um, there is plenty of evidence that being born to it doesn't guarantee you get it. It just means you have a chance. Would you quit that? Anyways, uh, it could be a recessive trait, that's absolutely true. Because like you just mentioned, Kiatamundi's children are not all Force-sensitive. But then again, there's the whole Skywalker line, the Force is strong in my family thing, which is probably the most obvious thing that's in that direction. You know, I wouldn't have minded these invisible enemies if there were more indications of where they were. They were. I was admittedly guessing based on the fact that I've fought those guys before, and I know their patterns. And as you saw, I was only occasionally correct. If, like, there was something where the snow would be disturbed, or we'd see the footprints like that, or something, that might work out a little bit better. But whatever. Um, okay, so, where the hell is the other... Does anyone know where the other light is? I, I don't even know where to begin to look for it. I could just I could roam randomly, is the point of that here. So let's roam randomly. They also can do things like that, which completely invalidates the... <sighs> we done? Russian's gone, Roman cure. It invalidates the snow... the footsteps thing when they can literally just jump around and not touch the ground. For 20 feet lunges. Like that. Southeast. Thank you. Whoever said that. I didn't even see it. And there's also the fact that you can in basically use magic, let's call it what it is, in order to make someone Force-sensitive, in order to give them the Force. See Anakin. For example, that. It... Hi, Goldbug. Alright, so next question. What do what do you see the value in Sith history? What do you see the value in Sith history? I don't understand the question. Blade Traval asks, do you prioritize offense or defense in ARPGs? Oh sorry, action games or RPGs. Uh Offense, obviously. I, I tend to universally prefer offense. Although, in my defense, that's mostly because the overwhelming majority of games value offense over defense. It's very rare that a true defensive build is actually viable in any game. Now, there are exceptions, of course. But for the most part, it's much better to kill something in one shot than to sit there and live for five turns while you pluck them down. I do like to play tank. I almost universally play tank in games where that's a thing. Would the Empire take over Sith planets for tourism? Uh, no. Places that are absolutely d drunk in the dark side are probably not places that random tourists need to be going to. <sighs> that being said, is there a value in Sith history? Let's see, I'm building uh, like. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Because, you know, there's a value in history in general. Like, there, there's an archaeological value, there's a historical value, there's a cultural value. 
you know, preservation, history, learning from the past, etc. But I wouldn't open up a McDonald's on Korriban, for example. Now that'd be a Wendy's. Okay, southeast is this way. Yeah, that's what Circa would do, exactly. I don't know how better to make my point. Help you. Just checking all the buildings as we go here. Very appropriate music. Southwest would be over here, which is what I've been kind of roaming towards. I'm afraid I'm not sure what Marathon is, I'm sorry. I'm assuming based on context it's a game. Lit spot, but that doesn't matter. Really... If it's in the question queue, I'll get to it, Roman Cure. If it's not in the question queue, I'll never see it again. It's gone. Gone! Like my chan my my patience with this level! That's that's where that question is. Gone! Alright, sorry. <clears throat> Hi. Um, okay, we seem to be relatively safe, so I'm just gonna stand here and get assassinated. Hang on, let me put my back to the wall there. Um, delete, delete, delete. Did I already get that one? I guess we'll find out in a second. Might not have gotten this. This might be it. This might be it. Yeah. Is there... Uh, ah! There is a question in there from you, Roman Cure. Speaking of which... <clears throat> do I generally like the Dynasty Warrior style of gameplay? So, asterisk, but yes. The thing is, I'm... I've actually played quite a few Dynasty Warrior style games in my my life, and honestly, most of them are pretty boring. And that's the problem. The 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 mm. so I it's like saying, do I like RPGs? The answer is yes, but if you really think about it, think about how many terrible RPGs there are out there. It's the same kind of problem, right? So, there are several Dynasty Warrior games I actually rather enjoy. I liked Hyrule Warriors, um, one of the Dragon Quest Warriors I enjoyed. It's not the one we streamed, it's the other one. Um, there's also Sengoku Basara 3, I just mentioned that. And... I feel like there's like one other one. And I can't even think of it right now. But as you can see, it's not a large list, right? So, that's kind of where we're at with that. Um... Let's see... And there's Roman Cure's question, which I'm not going to answer. Because we're going through a portal. Let's see what the portal leads us to. I never played those ones, Zach Taft. I was about to say, let's see how bad this goes. Oh, we're just, we're just in the... That's what this is! Oh, that's... Oh god, and there's those assholes. 
So I'm supposed to pay attention because there's like several things I want here. I'm not sure how much I care at this point in my life, but like several good talismans. I was looking up talismans and several of the talismans I want are all here. Shut up. Stop making your noise. Stop it. Let you live if you didn't make the noise. I'm just saying. Bomberman music is always appropriate. But I am a man of my word. I said every new area I would turn on the in game music. So you hear it. I haven't liked a single song that isn't a combat song this entire game, but I am a man of my word. So let me pull a trigger here. I'm afraid not, Console Hawk, since I don't have the ability to dump the tens of gigabytes, I think actually hundreds of gigabytes of music that I have just online somewhere. I have a very large collection. I'm quite proud of it, actually. And I've been collecting it since the 90s at this point, so, you know. Um, okay, so, Roman Kira, I was just joking. Let's look at your question. You say, if time, money, talent, experience, and effort were no issue, if I could just snap something into existence. What creative work? Um, book, game, video, board game, movie, animated, live action, whatever. So I can only make one thing, is what I'm understanding this question as. I get one thing to make. That's extremely limiting. I'd have to really think about that. Let me, let me process this, because I want to make dozens of things. I have so many ideas that I hope someday to actually be able to craft. I got one thing. One thing. Don't die. That's that's death. That's what that is. Hey, you can see the ocean down there. So I get to make one thing. Uh, let me think about this. Um, a list of the name of songs. I could do that. Yeah. Uh, you'd have to give me. You'd have to tell me which playlist you want a list of. Oh my God! Quit it. How did you live? Stop with the 1 HP thing. You know what? Hang on, hang on. So, let's try not dying horribly this time. Alright. Lack of horrible death. Yet. Did you have to? I was just walking through. Why are you killing me? I mean, I know what you are. You're, you're followers of the Great Tree. Well, no, the whole point is I get to make one thing, Roman Cure. So I have to think about, like, I get one charge, one cast of a, I just get to make thing perfectly. And there we go. I didn't see your question in the question queue. In fact, I still don't see your question in the question queue. You lied to me, Lateral Ox. Liralikira the Rodox. Oh my god, come on, Lord. Rat Latariox. There we go, I got it, I got it. Where is my corpse? Where is my corpse? Oh, there it is. Why is it over here? Listen, their orchestra is so crap that I literally died from it. disliking this dungeon, by the way, while we're on the subject. So yeah, I get to I get to Q snap one thing into existence. And so what do I spell oh, ants, ants. What do I spend that charge on? 
of all the things I want to make, what is the thing that I want to make the most perfect and the most thoroughly? So, could you do me a huge favor, Latariox? Could you put that in the question queue so I could actually address it and read it out properly when I've got a moment to read questions? Like I do not have right now, for example. Loot! Okay. Hey, I've got the Scarlet Rod. Hey, I'm dead. I love this dungeon. This is the best dungeon. Right, Latario, I can say a lot easier. Wait, so there's three of you? That's kind of cool, actually. So... Yeah, I'm, I'm already leaning towards not liking this place. Like, we literally have the Irritation enemies, who are just the Irritation enemies, with Scarlet Rod as an environmental hazard, with platform narrow navigation in a Souls game. Without the ability to summon your mount. Just had to check that one really quick. Oh, jeez. Um, so if, Latario, if you could type in the letter, or the exclamation mark, and then the letter Q, and then just put your question, then it'll go in the question Q, and I could go ahead and have it saved. I got a little document over here that I can then check it, and everything's cool. Sure, Von Falkenstein. So far, the story of this game is a drug-addled uh, survivor who is trying to get off the crack, and everyone keeps telling him, You need to do crack! And he's like, well, I don't want to do crack. And they all, so they all try to murder us, and all of this is just one giant cocaine uh, uh, fever dream. There we go. So, that sucked. Moving on. In total contrast to what Plutonia just said, I'm going to be rushing a little bit more than usual because this place sucks and uh, I'm not fighting any of this nonsense in this terrain. So, huh. Well, that's a good question, Dream Whisperer. We know there's a god of Scarlet Rod, and the Scarlet Rod is kind of a consequence of that god being sealed. Yes, sealed. It would be worse if they weren't. Hey, another ancient stone. That's always nice. At least there's several graces as we go. If we hadn't, like, if these last two graces didn't exist, this would be much, much, much more towards negative territory. Oh, we've killed several already, Dream Whisperer, so I suppose the answer to your question is yes. Uh, I didn't, uh, where's your question, Zach Taft? I don't see your question, but I do see, I still haven't answered Roman Cure's question. 
only get to pick one thing to really pull the trigger on. Okay, so the first thing I do is I die to that spell. This is all very important. I think if I can only pull the trigger on having a game where I don't have to worry about things like time management and all that. Uh, in other words, a game where I could do the most ludicrous game design concept I could, I think I would go ahead and make a uh, that multi-layered strategy game that I've theorized about several times. Uh, the multi-layered strategy game is, you know, there's... there's uh, multiple layers to it, that's the whole point of it. So, like, there's... Uh, Oh, these things are fun. Oh, my God. Oh, that should not have worked out. Uh, you know, there's like a ground layer and uh, a space layer and all that fun stuff. You know, there's whole kinds of layers to the stuff. It's, it's hard to talk right now. This place is interesting. Um, the idea of it is to play Stellaris and be able to zoom in and play, you know... EU4, and possibly be able to zoom in a third layer and either play the specific battles themselves or uh, have a city building level to it, or even both, because again, this is, a, this is a Q staff one, so we can just do whatever we want with this one. So, that's probably the game I would pull the trigger on, because making a game like that would be nonsense. But, if we could just one into existence, that's that's why I would pull the trigger on that one, is because I, I could never make that otherwise. And it would be it would be the extant, of course. It would be the full length, depth, and breadth of the extant, which would be also insane, because, you know, that's a decent shot of the galaxy at that point. Loris. Time for you right now. I've actually thought about it some, though. I think I would probably get rid of the tactical layer, uh, which was my original idea, and instead replace it with the city builder layer. I think that would actually work better in several ways. The city builder layer, city builder layer would essentially be the answer to the question, what do you do in a strategy game when you're at peace? This won't be a boss. Okay, wasn't expecting that. That's okay. That's cool. I'm cool. Everything's cool. Uh, so yeah, that's my answer to you, Roman Cure. That's the one I would pull the trigger on. Uh, Luke says, you said the four... Oh, I already answered that one. Um, Luco says, Lucalino says, what, did you, what made you start analyzing lore and stuff like that? Uh, that's a good question. I suppose... The easiest answer to that would be because I was an irritating child who always asked the question, why? So I would see a movie, you know, as a kid, and see, well, well, hang on, why does that work this way? Or I'd see a plot hole, and I'd think, well, hang on, that doesn't make sense. I'd try to figure out how the setting worked. I'd try to figure out how the world worked. And that was true. Again, this goes back to when I was a child, when I was in the single-digit range. And I suppose that's the best answer I could give you, is that I've just kind of always been that way. I know that's not a very satisfying answer, but it's the only one I really have. Um, I would absolutely push for, like, co-op in a game like the one I just mentioned. Multiplayer would be the more difficult thing to do, but if we remove the tactical layer, multiplayer suddenly becomes very, very easy to do. Well, I was standing still and is summoning Plutonia, so she just kind of face with me standing still and summoning, so. Not a lot I could do about that other than not summon. And I figured, well, I might as well summon, right? Um, 
I don't understand your question, Warcraft Code, if you don't mind clarifying. Yeah, this is, this is a fun run back. I'm not super fond of this one. Uh, get up. Get up. Yeah, there's probably a shortcut. I don't know where. Could you not? Could you not? I can't get through your bad ass. Jesus Christ, lose some weight. Um, thanks, Luke. All right, next question. Uh, my opinion on the best fish. What What is my opinion? The best fictional assassins. Oh, geez, I don't know. Um, best fictional assassins. Best fictional assassins. Um. What the hell is this? I actually turned around. There we go. I mean, okay, so let's just be clear. The best assassin in fiction is Agent 47. Like, that's that's just one-to-one. -one. There's nothing else for that. Um, so, Agent 47 best assassin, period. That's... There's no avoiding that. After that, however, I'd have to think about that. So, okay. Allow me to try and explain terribly. A few hundred thousand, Dream Whisper. Um, I actually don't know the number. I'd love to check the VOD because I stopped keeping track. But, yeah. I probably just lost a few hundred thousand uh, souls. To my initial death, or rather my second death, but the same difference. If it was only 30,000, that's whatever. Ugh. What is this? Where is this? Whatever. Vulcan with the transporter gun. He was a good assassin. He killed a lot of people. Um, okay, so we have a shortcut to somewhere. We'll figure that out after we die again. Get out of my way, please. You are literally irrelevant. Moving out. Um, Warcraft run. So it will not be... Oh, God. Um, words. The Warcraft lore run will not be redone, but it will be a Warcraft lore run. I know this is a matter of terminology, but it's it's the same thing. So what I mean by that is there are two types of lore run. You know what? It doesn't even freaking matter. Nobody cares. Yes, we'll do another War lore run. Woo. But we'll be reviewing it this time never reviewed WoW, so the point will be to review WoW. However, that is so not happening anytime soon, it probably won't even be happening this year. That's the answer to your question. Melania, Melania, Miranari Niamanuya. No. Yeah. Mimic Bro just being my tank. Like you do. Honestly, that's probably a good cutoff point. My food's almost here. Um. I'm going to answer some questions real quick before I cut off. If I was a Sith, how would I make up my own doctrine to fix the downsides of the Sith Order? Um, I don't think that's possible, so that would be my answer to you. Von Falkenstein says, can you tell us what the story of this game is? No. Zach Teff says, do you think Cerberus would have gone for a clone army if, 
would have gone for a clone army, they could have used Miranda's DNA to make said army. Might even be it in the Jongo clones. I see no reason why they wouldn't. If they could, they couldn't, most clearly, because they didn't. Latario, I'm, I'm trying, sorry, I'm stumbling over the word. Latario asks, if I was writing Star Wars, how much would I depower the Force? So, the original trilogy, there's your answer. I like the idea that Palpatine was the was the most powerful Force user, and he could do things like use Force Lightning. But that's it. And you're probably thinking, what? That's high tier? No, it really isn't. Force Lightning is actually extremely ground floor level of power when it comes to both the EU and the AU. There are people, you know, force storms and, and flinging Star Destroyers at people and being able to teleport or interact with other people or pull, bring people back from the dead temporarily or all sorts of nonsense. I would just smash it right back down to the general level that it was. Another good example of this would be probably um, uh, several of the EU novels focus on how the Force is a nice additive, but is not a replacement for uh, mundane skills. So, you know, you, you can use the Force, but you still need to be able to you know, repair a, a hyperdrive, just to use a stupid example of that. So, oh yeah, mass mind control. And again, Palpatine had the ability to literally destroy a Star Destroyer by himself on accident. <laughs> just to use another example of that. So you get my point. That's what I mean when I say I'd smash it down, Latario. Just, just pull it back down to the relative level where it was. Um, and I'd probably go ahead and make it a magnifier of existing skills. So let's say you are a Force user who is an engineer, uh, like a repair engineer like like O'Brien. He would be able to do substantially better repairs across the board because he would be able to use their Force to say, hey, I, I, I need to repair this, this, and here. This thing's about to break, but I know I can replace it with this. And have that have a, as a magnifier rather than just being able to go out and go... And there you go, everything's fixed. Thank you, Bella. Very, very much. As always, I do much appreciate and much obliged. I think I actually agree with that, Plutonia. Because his whole point is he's just masking his own usage of the Force. So I'm kind of with that. And yeah, Battle Meditation, which was supposed to be a Palpatine thing, and then they gave it to uh, What's-Her-Face and so forth and so on. But you get the general idea. Now, my food is very much almost here. We'll be back relatively soon to continue the tree from hell.